Thursday. All right, man. Welcome to another edition of BS. It's Thursday. You know where you're at. You're on YouTube watching this because you have nothing else better to do. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching this episode. But uh, before we get into the inter get into the introductions, Jerry, and then throw it to Eric so he could tell All us right. what we're doing. Yeah, okay. Who's got the TV on? I was going to say, whose TV's oh, on? Oh, shit. I forgot to mute it. You Sorry. again? <laughs> You've done yeah. that before. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Man. Another Farted. awesome. Another Dude, awesome panel. I tonight. smell it through the screen. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Exactly. All right. Yeah, yeah, I came awesome. all the way from Tennessee. Jesus Christ, are you gonna let me introduce the fucking? All right, that? go ahead. I'm still smelling your fart, but go oh, ahead. If I was gonna fart, you'd hear it. <laughs> and you probably could smell it through the screen, actually. So <laughs> anyway. All right, yeah. Um, what the fuck? What, what was I doing? Oh, introductions. All right, <laughs> Eric hey, RMCP okay. Jordan. He actually picked this episode tonight. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I've been waiting for this episode for a couple weeks now, so I'm 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 stoked, man. It's Thursday. I got some wine here. Uh, I'm just ready to hang with my buds and uh, do do this uh, this episode, which is it's a pretty cool concept. I'm surprised it's never been really done before on a podcast or YouTube video and. Uh, you want, did you want me to give like a description of what we're doing? Well, let we'll introduce people first, then we'll okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's circle back, and then we got our, we got our, one of our favorite guests, our reoccurring guest. Would love having him on with the cool Motley Crew shirt on. The Joseph good Motley Stop. Crew. How you doing, man? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited for this topic. This is just this is a really cool topic. I'm really glad to be doing this with you guys. Hell yeah. yeah, I admit this was, this was kind of difficult for me. You should have some pretty. It was easy. tough, was man. It was tough. tough. And also, we got welcome back wearing a, the coolest shirt in the room. I think. Oh yeah, opinion. I think so. Crocus shirt, Travis Prada, man. How you yeah. doing, Travis Patty? I'm good, guys. My vacation starts now, actually. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. Hey, and you I'm the gonna... welcome back yeah. Cotter theme. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome yeah. back. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, we, uh, before, what is a, it? That, a, cheers. I'm having a pina colada. I was colada. gonna say pina colada. And, uh, I got some. This is the gayest drink in the world, but uh, some cotton candy uh, wine. <laughs> I had to. I had to have like so. I had to have like a fruity like kind of drink to to balance out all the testosterone that's gonna be happening in this episode. Whiskey. This as usual is better than this shit. This is terrible. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. shitty, she shitty folks, Budweiser. Uh, you I'm drinking water. We <laughs> 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 all right, man. Girlfriends and a bottle of wine. I, I, I teach children for a living, a so I can't drink during the week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, <shit>. a, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> anyway, before we get to the BS stuff, let's uh, let Eric explain what our show is going to be about tonight. Yeah, so this is a concept. Uh, I actually did this like a while ago, but I just did like a meme. And I just assembled a team, but like that was like a couple of years ago. Obviously, the people on there have changed, but uh, basically, what we're doing is, you know, the 1987 movie Predator, absolute classic. It's a cool concept where it's an alien. And it's kind of a slasher movie where this alien's just picking off these people one by one, but instead of like horny teenagers. He's picking off like some of the baddest like action heroes on the planet, man. Some of the baddest mofos on the planet. And I thought it was such a cool concept, but I'm like, man, if you could assemble your own team of seven guys to take on the predator, like who would they be? Like any action characters, like, would you want to choose this guy or this guy? And I, I basically got the idea because uh, I watched predator and I just been on a big eighties action movie kick um, lately. And I just got inspired to like, just, you know, Let's do this on the BS sessions. This would be a great topic. So basically the rules are it has to be seven guys, uh, just like the team Arnold had was seven guys. Can't be any of the characters from the original Predator movie, and you can't use the same actor twice. So you can't have, like, for example, the Terminator and Conan the Barbarian because they're two Arnold characters. You can have one Arnold character, you know, per team, you know. So basically assemble, like, seven of your all-time favorite characters they don't even have to be action action heroes they don't have to necessarily be men uh whatever it can just be whatever characters you want it can be even wrestlers i know some of us are wrestling fans here um just seven people that you want to take on the predator and you gotta also pick your sole survivor and as a bonus and i i think mark mentioned this to everyone pick a girl 
because uh, obviously the team of seven men predator they find this woman and she kind of helps them out you know she kind of gives them a little bit of backstory of like what she knows about this creature um you know she helps them out so and she's kind of eye candy you know the girl in that movie is kind of cute she's kind of sexy so uh you know pick a girl too that they find and it can be anyone you want you know just whatever you want you know have fun with it so that's basically the challenge and i, I hope other people too maybe do this concept on their podcast as well and we start a trend here cool yep. but that's it yeah but yeah, this, you, this, you this, said this. i could you said i could pick girls too i didn't have to pick. oh yeah that. yeah you can pick girls okay, yeah just yeah, making sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be a recurring theme on our show i kind of like this concept so we it's kind of steal a cool it concept you. yeah hell yeah mm -hmm. yeah we, we like we do movies man our mo uh what was the last episode we did that was different it was like slasher movies. Flashers? Flashers. 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 yeah and that did yeah. That yeah. did pretty well well you so. fucked that up though because like like half of us, you said My like bad. it's slasher villains, and the other half is yeah. slasher movies. Yeah, uh, I wasn't yeah. thinking clearly. It was a hybrid that. episode. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like a hybrid episode. It was still fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. So All right, Mark. BS. All right. Well, let's start with uh, two deaths. I'm going to say the second one for second because uh, that's going to be a fucking bore. Hey, up real here. quick though, I want to I want to give a cheers to my my good buddy Mason who. Uh, uh, I heard about uh, that. He man. passed away on Easter Sorry Sunday, that, but uh, he, uh, you know, we all of our friends found out today. He's a great guy, one of the funniest dudes ever. Uh, he's one of those guys, man. He he should have been on like one of the podcasts or something because he's he was such an entertaining guy. But uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. But uh, Mason, this one's for you, man. I miss you, brother. Loved you like a brother. You're a good friend, man. So this one's for him. Done. All right. So uh, I know. Most of you people in here don't like the band Firehouse, which I, I heard another guy goes, now everybody's Firehouse fans because CJ Smith. <laughs> God damn it. I don't need a blowback from him anymore. <laughs> I mentioned him. I mentioned him. That, mentioned that, that's okay, Mark. He's busy talking about somebody else now. <laughs> uh, that's fine with me. I, and he's also gave Love me a you, he also gave me a compliment in the last episode. So that was cool, pretty cool. He said, not even Mark was taking this shit out something on the cheap trick stuff i told because i told i told that guy to shut up about it just let it go and uh, let it go let it Walk go but twist. cj's he hasn't I, but if you guys know if you listen to free for me listen to here i am a firehouse fan i've said it i post their videos yeah. i play them on that metalstation.com so i'm not a fan who just came out of the woodwork so because he died cj snare he died of cancer man that that is fucking Horrible at 64, man, Jerry. Like I said, I was never a Firehouse fan. The guy's voice irked me to death. Oh, I don't mean to use that. Bad, bad, bad choice of words. It <laughs> irked me to my soul. But it's uncool when people die, dude. I mean, he had a lot oh, of fans. Some people. And, it, and it made a lot. Well, yeah, the next person I'm pretty happy about. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sad. I don't want to see people die. Even if I don't like them. I mean, he's probably, he could be a really good person. I don't fucking know. But, you know. Rest in peace, dude, man. I just wasn't a fan of your music. That's all. Yeah, on my first block last night, I played Firehouse and did a tribute to CJ Snare, and I played Reach for the Sky. I, said, I love that song. The, I go, Reach for the Sky, brother. You know, well, I'm, I'm an for... outlaw. Dude, that fucking little drum triplet they're, they're doing in that yeah. song is fucking amazing. <laughs> well, what do you think about it, Eric? Uh, you know, I'm not a Firehouse fan, but I do like a couple of their songs, man. Uh, you know, they're one of those bands. I heard a couple of their hits and it's very cheesy 80s hair metal, man. It's like that, that last wave of hair metal before grunge finally came in and took over. And a lot of stuff's real shitty, but, uh, there's a lot of it that it has like a charm to it. A lot of it I do like, um, and Firehouse is one of those bands. I, I listened to full albums and it was kind of one of those things. I like half the songs, didn't really like the other half of the songs. Um, but they, they hold a special spot in my heart. I do, I do dig some firehouse. Um, you know, uh, I live my, I live my life. I love that song. I sing it to my beautiful wife, Mary, who I know is uh, listening to this episode when it goes up. Um, I sing that song to her all the time. She loves it. Um, and now I love a couple of their songs. Don't treat me bad. Reach for the sky. Rocky and I, they're, they're pretty catchy. He had a great voice. Uh, if, you know, in my opinion, um, and he seemed from what everything I've heard, he seemed like a really cool guy. A lot of people really got along with him or were devastated when he passed. Uh, but they, they all, they all special place in my heart. They're a band I can objectively listen to and be like, yeah, it's kind of dorky, kind of like wimpy rock, but I, I dig, I dig some of it, man. It's pretty good. Um, and you know, rest in peace, man. He was a, 
great singer and uh, a lot of those songs bring back some good memories from like high school uh you know and also too without that man i would have never been conceived because my dad and my mom conceived me while listening to firehouse that's oh, wow. yeah. yeah mine was elvis not... oh hell yeah that's a lot cooler <laughs> <laughs> joseph i i mean I'm, I'm not a huge firehouse fan i don't hate him at all i've seen him twice live they were great um kind of like eric there's some songs i really do enjoy my mom really loves firehouse so this she was kind of upset, and we we just saw them last year, right before he had to uh, go on his hiatus, and that he unfortunately never never came back from. Um, but yeah, they're, I think I think they're a cool band. I think they get kind of lumped into that. All oh, we hate all these bands. I think they're definitely a few steps ahead of some of those bands. I agree. Um, they're not they're not trickster. I'll put it that yeah. way. No, um, no, fuck trickster. Exactly. Um, like one album. I I, I fuck definitely all their albums. I I put I put them above, uh, all those a lot of those other later era hair metal bands that kind of just became absolutely redundant. I think they did have some unique sound to them, uh, and I, I I enjoyed listening to them. And like I said, they were great live. And it's just it's going to be weird not seeing them ever again at M three with him. Are they going to continue? I think, I think they so. They've already I mean, had they've had somebody, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have they've had somebody them. singing with them for the past like six or so months because originally it was just he was on hiatus to get surgery for the cancer. And he was supposed to come back later this year, I think they said. Summer. And yeah. Real question is, are they going to continue with them or are they just finishing out these dates with the new, with the replacement and then just calling it quits? I don't That's think a real they question. Will. I, I really don't think any band will it quits anymore. Yeah. yeah. They'll continue. Yeah. So the, the I, kind of I, shows that they play, I mean, the kind of venues that they're playing, they can keep playing those kind of venues. It's not like, oh my God, you don't have CJ Snare, we're not going to book you anymore. I just want to say, Firehouse oh, did have God. a hit, "Love of a Lifetime" during the grunge era. So you yeah, got to. I didn't that. realize. Man. I didn't realize that song was like that. I I figured that was one of the songs Huge. that like hair metal fans look back on as like, oh, it's such a great underrated song. But I didn't realize it was actually like a hit. Yeah, no, that During was that, that was a big hit. That, big hit. That's a pretty During, cool thing, man. The Nirvana era, man. It's like, that's damn. a pretty big accomplishment, man. I like I said, I didn't I didn't know that until he died and people started posting about that. I'm like, really? That was a hit during the the 90s. I figured that was just a song people look back on now and think of it as like a hit. And even so, even I, when I, I look into your cool, eyes man, off the second the album was a pretty big hit yeah. too. Yeah. So that's even later. I mean, that's 92, second 93 album, that's at that some, point. That second album had some pretty good songs on it that mm -hmm. I actually really enjoyed. Un unfortunately, unfortunately, the both times I saw them, the only thing is they 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 made they mostly played stuff off the first album. The only thing, oh I yeah, ever saw them, oh no shit, yeah. The only the only songs I ever saw them play off the second album were the title track and uh, when I look into your eyes. That, that was all they ever played. Really, they didn't play "Reach for the Sky" or "Rock You Tonight." "Reach for the Sky" is the title track. Yeah, "Reach for the Sky." I, oh, thought yeah, was, but... I thought it was Hold Your Fire. No, the that's Reach the for the Sky album. was on a Reach for the Sky album. I gotta show a fucking big Firehouse fan I am. <laughs> that's, the one, that's the one with the chick on the cover? Reach yeah. for the Sky? No, that's the first one. with the. No, I yeah, don't the, fucking know. I don't know that band. <laughs> I don't know what they look like. I do not own a Firehouse CD. I'll put the only it album I know is the I don't either. I have them all digital. So there Is that brunette? Brunette girl on the cover. That's the only album That was the one in a letter. You know the second bye, album is called bye, baby, bye, oh, oh, no, the second baby, right. so oh, that song. I thought, I thought it was called Reach. Yeah, the yeah, second sorry. album. The second album is called Hold Your Fire. I thought yeah, it was called uh, Reach for the Sky for some reason. I didn't know oh, they had yeah. more than one album. So yeah, they cool. had, so, yeah, like, so they wow, played yeah. yeah, they played Reach for the Sky and went. They played the two singles. Yeah, baby, don't treat me bad. Oh God, please, that's no. trickster, isn't it? <laughs> That's no. not yeah. Oh yeah, that's going to be bad. Yeah, you know, I did Fuck see them live. Story. I think they, op I think they opened up for Def Leppard. I seen Firehouse live, and they were really good. They were really good. So I did hey, see man. them. Dude, he was a great singer, man. Day. You enjoy him, man. You know, more power to you guys. Seriously. <laughs> hey, uh, Travis, what do you think? Travis Patty. Uh, I have really don't have much to say. I have really, really good Firehouse fan. I heard. Okay, first off, look, I'm gonna be, I'll be nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> but cancer sucks, and I I hope that he's you no. Know, I hope that he's in a better place now. And I, I don't hate Firehouse. It's just they're not. It's not my thing. Yeah, I heard all. She, I heard me. all she wrote. 
I heard all she wrote, and I gave that a hard pass. Yeah. Like, yeah. There are all those bands I definitely... Right. It's catchy, the fucking lyrics. They, 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 have their, they have their fans, so it's all good. Yeah. I don't mean to sound like a dick, but... <laughs> you know, now because they died, I want to get them on vinyl. Joking. They're, uh, one of those band, I'll, I'll, they're definitely one of those I'll bands where, like... Go ahead, Travi Patty. Or yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. He told yeah. me to call you Travi Patty, so... Right. Yeah, Travi Patty, that's his name. I'll put CJ's photo as my profile picture now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was always a fan. But uh, here, here's the one thing I'll say. Here's the one thing I say. The one person, when Ralph always makes that joke about like, oh my God, it's going to be like the biggest thing ever when this person dies, like all their new fans, the one that he always comes back to is Klaus Mine from the Scorpions. Oh yeah, you know that's Peter that's the like, one. That's the one that he always says. Oh, he's you such know, an underrated it. singer. You know it. He's the one that when he fought, when he dies, people are going to be all over the place. I will go on record on April eleventh, twenty twenty four, saying that Klaus Mine is in my top three singers of all time, and I of course singer. will be posting the shit out of the. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I already I, post the shit out of. I just want to say I'm a but, huge but, Ugly but, Kid but, Joe fan. So anybody but, dies but, of Ugly but, Kid Joe, but, I'm, but, I'm but, there. But, I'm there. What? Look at the show. They're opening oh, up for scorpions the, on the residency in, right now. Cats yeah, in the cradle, my ass. ass. Okay, fuck, fuck oh, cats yeah, in the cradle. I do love that song because I'm a dad now. So Dude, that's, yeah, that's their love, fuck. That's the real version. I love the real version of that song. Oh, shut Not the, fuck the ugly up. kid Joe. Fuck, I love like that cover. Dude. I love that cover because I'm a father Dude. now. No, I love the song. There's so many better. I hate the ugly kid Joe version. Neighbor's good. I hate everything about you. It's not that good. That's the song that broke them. Of course, fucking it's listen, it's to God, it's listen to Goddamn Devil. Listen to two songs off that album called Goddamn Devil and Panhandling Prince. My dad fucking has great that shit. CD. It's fucking horrible. Oh, I love America's Least Wanted. But uh fuck it. Let's get to a let's get to somebody. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to go. I want to go first on this one, man. OJ died today. Woo! All right. I remember, yeah. I remember watching this fucking on TV. I was watching the NBA Finals. It was fucking uh, Houston Rockets against the New York Knicks on NBC. Fuck and New all York of a sudden, Knicks. the fucking finals go down to the fucking bottom screen. Fuck New York. Going, what the fuck is this? They're showing a slow speed chase because OJ might have killed somebody. You know, thank you, OJ, for the fucking... He did people. kill someone. Okay, I know. I'm just saying right now. But the thing is... That's what started all these news channels going for those high speed chases. Like, can they break in high speed chases because OJ fucking got ratings more than the NBA Finals? And that fucking pissed me off because I missed that game. I was loving that game. I was going for New York on that one. Uh, fuck Eric. you, fuck uh, you, and fuck. I like New York. John Starks, man, because he was in the fuck Beastie Boys. He plays for New York, so fuck he was him. in the Beastie Boys song. And fuck you know. him, don't matter. He's in East New York. Fuck New York. His only okay. claim, John, John Starks' only claim to fame is he managed to dunk over Jordan. That was his only claim to fame. Is I like John one Starks. Time. He had pizzazz, one time man. he did that. Yeah, one pizzazz. time he did that. But I'm just gonna say I watched that fucking trial and. and what, the thing that was stupid about it with the glove thing, they had him put on a latex glove. I know. <laughs> and then put on the glove. Of course it's not going to fit! Well, everybody always makes the thing about the glove. The glove had nothing to do with why he was acquitted. I know, but still. It, it had didn't... nothing to do with why he was acquitted. It got turned into always... a race thing. It got turned into a race well, thing. That, it really I'll, did, I'll yeah. talk about that. I'll talk about that. But it it was it was the, the forensics on the sock or something like that that... Yeah. It was it was found that they planted evidence on a sock or something like that. The, like the, they, the dog they, the dog paw print around yeah. his house, <laughs> and they planted they they planted his blood on a sock or something like that yeah, because it had it had traces of test tube fluid on it or something like that. Well, and, well, and just, it's just like it's just ridiculous. I mean, he hey man, I, I, how I, many I, lawyers I would, to get him off? If I were to do something stupid, I hope I'm able to get those guys to fucking represent <laughs> me. I'm telling you, well, Johnny Cochran is dead. Do you and have, so have about and, dead too? And so is the Robert dead. Shapiro. What it, uh, Car- Robert Kardashian? Kardashian's dead. Yeah, so. Do you dead. have about eight hundred million dollars, even if they were alive? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I can. One of the best lines: "Love don't fit. You must quit." You know? Love don't fit. You must, must quit. quit. I watched that shit live, man. I wasn't working shit. at that time. But the thing is, I, I gotta say something. It's like I, I ain't know he killed her. I know so he obviously did. killed her. I yeah. know he did. He wrote the... a fucking book about <laughs> killing her. But the thing is, <laughs> uh, fast forward years later in a hotel room in Vegas, the guy has fucking serious anger issues. He fucking beat up a guy to get his fucking memorabilia back that he sold years ago. He has fucking anger issues. 
Let me stop and you real quick. Go for he it. Had. He knocked his. Now. He knocked. He's dead his now. Ex-wife almost unconscious like two or three times. Yeah. Before all that shit, so I can tell you what kind of guy he is. Anyway, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm just saying he has anger issues. So if you don't think he didn't kill her, you're on crack. I'm sorry, people. Uh, I'll let you go next, Eric. Yeah, so um, you know, I'm not one of these people that there's there's only a few people where like if they died, I'll be happy. One of those people's fucking OJ. Fuck you, OJ. The juice is fucking finally. Expired. I know what the second one is. I fucking hate OJ. Yeah, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> uh there's two, Jacob Truba and Sammy Hagar. Fuck them. I hope they die. <laughs> fuck them. But yeah, no, fuck OJ Simpson. You know, it was so obvious he fucking murdered them. It's such bullshit. It was turned into a whole race trial. Oh no, I'm gonna get canceled now because I said that. Fuck you. Uh, you know, fuck him, dude. It was a whole fucking race thing. Like, you know, it's just, it's such bullshit. It's such bullshit that he was literally like, you know, he, he was proven innocent or whatever for some bullshit. Bottom line is fuck OJ. He's a piece of shit. Fuck him. It was so obvious that he killed that woman, you know, his wife and, uh, whatever that guy is. Um, he also tried to, he nearly killed Robin Crosby. He tried to threaten Robin Crosby. So, you know, fuck you, OJ. Don't ever fuck with Robin Crosby. Robin Crosby rules. I would die for that motherfucker. Especially if Robin Crosby was still Oops. alive, man. Robin Crosby fucking rules. I would take a bullet for that man. You oh, know, you know what? Jason don't get, don't get up. Jerry started on Robin Crosby here. I that love Robin biggest, Crosby. He was the biggest douchebag in the world when I met him, man. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, well, he was going through AIDS or, and all that shit. No, nah, this is one of you still at the band, dude. Oh, shit. Well, uh, this is actually Reach hey, for the on. Sky. Hey, 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 I'll, take, I'll take Robin Crosby over over OJ Simpson. Anyway. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, I, I'll tell you what, man. Rob, Robin Crosby wrote some great songs. OJ Simpson, hey, that's shit. Not gonna, gonna deny that. I'm just saying hey. he's a douchebag person. Yeah, well, yeah. He was Nordberg and Naked Gun. That was amazing. He got his ass fucked Sim- up in the movie. Fuck O.J. Simpson, though, man. If O.J. Simpson was, I'd like to bring O.J. Simpson back from the dead so I could beat the shit out of him and, and f- beat the shit out of him again and then have him die again. Hey, okay. at least he, at least he finally found love, the murderer. I love, yeah. I love if O.J. like went into a, I love if O.J. went into a coma. I just sit at his hospital bed all day and wait for him to get out of the coma. Boom, back in the coma. Wakes up from the coma. Boom, back in the coma. Back to sleep. Nurse, back to sleep. Yeah. Hey, nurse hey comes, we don't condone nurse, violence on this show nurse, here. A yeah, nurse comes into the room. <laughs> Sir, busy guys. Yeah, boom, boom, I take it out the nurse. So yeah, I'm, sure the nurse I'm sure the nurse would actually turn, she'd probably turn her head too. Yeah. <laughs> fuck OJ Simpson. He's a bitch. I'm glad he's fucking dead. Honestly, the only thing I'm sad about is that it took so fucking long for him to finally fucking die. Fuck him. He's a piece of shit murderer. Fuck him. Fuck him. All right, Joseph. Oh man, my wife's listening to this episode. I love you, baby. Sorry you had to see a side <laughs> hey, of me, but hey. color, colorful expletives is all is metaphors is great. <laughs> I want to tell her skip this part of the episode. Like when we start my, OJ, right, Jerry? From, you know from, that line. from five minutes and ten seconds to about eight from, minutes co- and thirty-five yeah, exactly. seconds. Stop. Color, stop. color for metaphors part. are welcome. And this is fruit punch. Show. This is fruit punch in this bottle. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what movie well, that comes from, right, Jerry? Color for metaphors. Yeah, you know what movie that comes from. Spock. There you go. <laughs> Captain, why Pittsburgh did they Penguins use are winning. That's the right on. But Joseph, what do you think about OJ, man? All I'll say about it is all you need to do is go on YouTube and watch the footage of Oprah Winfrey's show the day that that verdict came down, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about why OJ was acquitted. Yep. Yeah. Good point. Look I remember at, that. Look at which half of the room was reacting to what. Yeah. It was a total race thing. It was. That's all it was. Well, I think wasn't Rodney King before him? Yeah, it was fresh off that too. Fresh so off they the were just recovering from that. This yeah. was all Rodney King thing. And I don't yeah, give so you, kinda... you point. Yeah, we're a bunch of white guys. You can point your fucking fingers at us, say like, "Oh, we're racist." No, fuck you. You want to talk about a bunch of white guys talking about Rodney King? You know when the riots happened <laughs> in L.A. because of that fucking verdict. My friends who worked at In and Out Burger, Jerry. Uh, they, they asked me, Hey Mark, we're going to go to LA and pick up some loot. And I go, well, have fun. I ain't going with you guys. They came back with all these fucking box sets, like Eric Clapton crossroads, all this fucking records and vinyl and shit. And I go, did you go in a store and get that? No, we were just picking up what they were dropping. And those were white guys. (laughs) the 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 worst part about those riots were when they pulled that fucking truck driver out. Oh, right. Reginald shit out of him. That yeah. was fucking. That's that bullshit. that was just shit, man. 
But I'm just saying white guys are just as bad, man. They went to the fucking to fucking pick up the loot. I go, what the fuck is wrong? You know, they got thirst later because they bought a tank that they thought was fucking, uh, they could huff. And they're sitting there huffing and shit and they're all getting sick. And I pick up the tank. I don't do shit like that. I only smoke weed. So I pick up the tank. I go, hey, idiots, this is Freon. They were up and free oh, on. Did not fucking die from that shit. No shit. Oh, they were fucking sick. They all passed out. I watched them because I always babysit those idiots. But what do you think about the OJ, Travis? Good. I'm glad. <laughs> I played Welcome to Hell from then as soon as I already died. <laughs> Charles Manson's yeah, down maybe, there with him. Maybe rock. Maybe rock. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he's so I saw there. a great meme. It was it was a picture of Charles Manson that said, "Don't worry, OJ. It's a dry heat." I put that up. <laughs> <laughs> I put that up earlier today. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to our uh, obligatory. I like to talk about OJ. Oh yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah, I mean, I remember. I you know, I actually read his dumbass book because I was curious and stupid. Oh, I also yeah. read Johnny. Also read Johnny Cochran's book. I watched that fucking trial every day. Did Cato have um, a book? I don't remember. He probably did. Everybody had a book. There. <laughs> fucking Marshall but, um, never had a book, too. Yeah. There's a few people on Facebook I was talking today that said, oh, I'm not sure OJ did it. I think his son might have something to do with it. I'm like, all that I've seen and read, you have to fucking really fucking convince me <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. I mean, nothing is certain. But I would bet, I would almost say 100% certainty that he killed both of those people. I mean, the, the the dog prints, Nicole's dog prints were on clothes that were at his house. Not to mention the blood. And they, of course, they say that it's painted or whatever. Bullshit there. Um, if he didn't do it, why was he running in the Bronco in the first place? Exactly. I mean, if he was in the city, he'd be like, I don't fuck you. I would have, well, he should have turned himself in right away and said, look, man, I didn't do this. You know what I mean? So, yep. You know, somebody, a couple of people gave me things to watch, something about his son or whatever. I'm going to watch him because, you know, out of respect for the people, I think Mark knows one of them who I'm talking about. I'm going to give it, you know, due diligence, but man, it's going to take a fucking lot for you to convince me that OJ Simpson did not kill those people. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I, yeah, not to be pro cancer in any way at all, but it fucking finally did something good. Yeah, that's right. The only time cancer's done anything fucking good. Yep. I yeah, yeah that, cancer, that, that cancer cell deserves a sloppy DJ from like a really trampy hooker. And I've lost a lot of friends and family with cancer too, but uh, I, mean, I, man. I say that in a very joking way. I'm, I'm not sick. I, I take cancer very seriously and I feel sorry. Oh, yeah. I had a lot of friends and family but, died uh, from cancer. And, your brother in law, yeah. right? I had two brother in laws die from cancer. <laughs> died from cancer. Yeah. Yeah. One had brain cancer and one had uh, liver cancer. Well, I started as a. Uh, um, colon cancer had spread to his liver and all that shit so I'm sorry, it, sucks, man. Man. It, it does it sucks man you know it's terrible hey, shout out to, to your sister man yeah she's working on her third husband right now it's like oh, oh no sh- <laughs> both of those are hers <laughs> yeah oh shit my older sister's a lesbian so she ain't having no husband sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah no <laughs> husbands <laughs> all right so let's get to our once a week obligatory kiss news oh fuck OMG. Gene Simmons. <laughs> is there more? Is there even any more we can talk about? Yeah, like because God, yeah. Gene Simmons oh. said that he didn't sell the catalog for money, Eric. What? He said God. he didn't sell the catalog That's for money. That's a funny joke. Tell it again. Oh, fuck <laughs> Kiss. Fuck this band already. I hate this band. The only thing positive that I hope will come out of them selling their catalog is the rumor was that they put that on off the soundboard series on halt because they were preparing to sell the catalog. And I'm hoping that now that they sold the catalog and everything's gone through and everything that they'll start releasing those again. Um, so I'm really hoping that they were holding off on all the box sets too. And now they finally announced, they announced that really overpriced creatures box set. Yeah. So, I, I hope, uh, I hope like Ralph, I think like Ralph mentioned something, that, something about on the podcast uh, is that, um, I hope that they're, they're not fucking the box sets are not as expensive as they are when like Gene and Paul are releasing them. Hopefully they'll be mm-hmm. a little bit more fucking affordable. Uh, I do want to get that creatures box set, but I, I love to get like uh, uh, I love to get like a Love Gun box set and like a uh, a box set for um, God, what, what's that one? Um, Asylum. 
because I love Asylum. That's I want one for Crazy Nights. Ugh. Oh, that's you'll get gay. you'll get that over all of our dead bodies, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I love that album. I'm I'll sorry. take I'll take an elder which, one first. Now you know which you know which album you know which album I really don't like by Kiss that's like actually like really b- well beloved. It's uh, the debut. I don't really like the debut. Not a huge fan. Yeah. Not yeah. A huge fan. Yeah. I don't yeah. like it. Most of them them are on the live though. They're way better on live. They're so much yeah, better on live. You like the songs though. It's just yeah, bad but they sound like the they sound like well, yeah, it's yeah, not even just bad production. It's just and they sound uninspired. Yeah. And they're better oh, on yeah. double platinum. They're better on double platinum. Oh yeah, I love it. That yeah, hundred thousand. The remixes years on, on double platinum, platinum way are a hundred times way better. better. Hundred thousand yeah. years. It, that's it cuts the, the ending off of Black Diamond. Yeah, it's, it it, it adds couple... it adds some life into those yeah. songs because they just they just sound so dead on that debut. And there's there's a couple of songs on the debut I just don't really like. Period. That are, yeah. I just don't think are like the are really great songs. They're, they you can tell it's like. You could you could tell like there are certain songs on there. It's like you could tell like these are some of their first songs they wrote, where like they really don't know how to write a song yet. But but there's also some classics on there, but they just sound better on other albums. Like the, 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 what, the three or four them. song, the three or four songs that were not on a live were not on a live for a good reason. They're, oh yeah, damn right. I mean, Kissing that, Time is one of the most atrocious. That song love song gay as fuck. Love song. Oh, love song theme kiss is awful. Shit. The only yeah. good thing, the only good thing that ever came out of "Let Me Know" was that they put the break into "She." Yeah, that's the only good. That's part the of only it. good part of that song, and they added it into "She" and made "She" better. Let me be your Sunday drive. Like fuck that shit. That sounds horrible. Yeah, no, all, all, all of all of the rest of the songs sound better anywhere else they were, whether it's uh, alive, double platinum, unplugged. They sound better. Nothing can fix that for me. Beth is the unplugged version song. of Beth. I do like the unplugged version. Of Beth. Enjoy, man. Enjoy. I like the regular version of Beth. Too, I hate, so. I hate the regular version, but the unplugged I love version I think is great. <laughs> I, I agree. Right. That Go ahead. The baby being, oh, I agree about the baby being overrated. It's like how I feel with you, Eric, about we both agree. Too fast for love is way too overrated. Yeah. I, Fuck that it, album. <laughs> I know that album sucks. Wow. Live that is amazing, but everything else is. Like, oh, it sounds and, like and, I oh, bought. and I realized, I realized, I've been listening for years. I've been listening to Live Wire and Piece of Your Action on Decade of Decadence because they're much better. I yeah, heard the radio yeah. play this version of Live Wire, and I forgot that it had the same shitty cowbell as the rest of the album. Yeah, I forgot oh, that stupid. I forgot that. I forgot that even live wire has that stupid little cowbell break. Yeah, but here's the thing: I when I was a kid, I heard live. I heard like a cover of live wire. I forget who did the cover of it, but my dad said, "Oh, that's Motley Crue." And at the time, I heard like a couple Motley Crue songs I liked, like all except from Shep Devil and Wild Side. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, "Oh man, what album is Live Wire on?" And uh, he told me it was Too Fast for Love, their first. I had my mom take me to Circuit City, get me Too Fast for Love, you know, because I'm, I'm like in third grade at the time or second grade. And uh, I loved Livewire. I kept playing it over and over. I'm like, all right, let me listen to the rest of the album. Man, the rest of that album sucks. And then Come sounds... On and Dance came on. And then some more <laughs> shit songs. Dance. It's it Come really On and dance. dance. Come on. Dude, it literally sounds like a shitty, like, garage it's rock awful. band from high school, like, trying it to record awful. on shit. Like, dude, my band in high school had some shitty demos they recorded on, like, my friend's iPhone that sounded better than fucking those songs on Too Fast for Love. It's just such shit. The it's only cool. good thing on Too Fast for Love are mix solos, the riff to the title track. Even the rest of the title track is kind of shitty. It's The riff is great. Oh, I- I don't really even like that riff either. I love the I love, I love uh, Live Wire and I do love Piece of Your Action, but the rest Let of it is horrible. I'll take the you tr- to the top. Take you to the top, sorry. Take mm. me to the top. I, I think the production was, was I like, I I like 90, okay. not, 90% of that album, so whatever. I, I like it. it. I hate I like 90% it. of that, that album. That, that, <laughs> this that album, album is such an anomaly how this it's album amazing. ever happened i, I know how know. the fuck that band shit that i album said out. how that album happened nikki yeah. six found some guy on the street full with a needle in his arm and stole his lyric book <laughs> dude shot the devil it's like when two shot the devil said like that many two, times shot the devil is like when two ugly people have a baby and that baby ends up growing up to be like real sexy <laughs> like a real sexy adult and you're and like then, the and then they have a second that? child <laughs> And then they have a bunch more kids after that, and they're all, and they're all ugly as parents. shit. Yeah. yeah. Ex- except yeah. the one, except the one kid that came on kind of late and didn't look. And the like one the kid that had a different dad. The one kid that had a different dad and didn't look like the parents <laughs> at all. Yeah. I love that album. 
the mailman's kid. Yeah. Amazing. Album. <laughs> we we have not reviewed that album on Freeform yet. Oh, we should. Yeah. Two things happened. The mailman had a kid, and the dad went off and screwed his mistress and made a great album. I love that yes. album too. Yes, oh, that <laughs> Steve Steve is so great. Yes. They just, dude, Vince and Motley Crue should have well, stayed separated. You're telling me. Two past the last thing that eat a dick. Yeah. It's yes. Dad, it's, it's dad New York dolls. It sounds like dad New York. Okay, dolls. okay, 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 okay. Let's compare that album to some. Fucking Dr. Feelgood shit and girls, girls, girls shit. Come oh on, my god, shit. Feel good. It blows them out, blows them, blows them out of the water. It's no, yeah. to, Jerry. To me, it's the same shit. It's it's an album with one or two good songs. And but the rest at is least, awful. at least it got it had some balls behind it. Girls, 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 and Dr. Feelgood are so fucking sterilized. It's Dancing just, on you know, glass. Okay. Come on, man. okay. Yeah, Wild right. side. Okay, to me, that's yeah, wild very right. fucking. Wild Side and the title track of Dr. Feelgood are the live wires of those albums. Yes, I agree. Wild Side is like new kids on the block. Do a I like song. Kickstart My Heart. I go, Don't Go Away Mad. You know, I like, oh, I like Don't Go Away Mad. I like that song, but like, it doesn't fit their I, sound. Time for I, Change I, is like I, the worst I, song ever, though. Time for Change worst song ever. sucks. And so is I, I, that, I, I, put with that, that I put Without You and Time for Change. Those songs suck. Take those two songs on the out. And I know nobody likes Rattlesnake Shake. I like it, but oh, Sticky Jesus. Sweet Socks. I don't that one. Sticky Sweet Socks. I like Sticky Sweet because it has Tommy Shaw and Jack Blade singing background on that oh, one. Oh, gee. You can't even hear them. It yeah, suck. I can. Because that's like, like Mark, 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 that's like saying <laughs> the only reason you like Al Waite is because Michael McDonald's on it. <laughs> Who? From the Doobie <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> You didn't no, know but that? Who's Al Wait? John Wait. John Wait. I'll no. I'll wait. By, I'll wait. By Van Halen. Oh, I'll wait. Okay, gotcha. Well, by wait. Van Halen. Oh that, no, he got that's that like song. the worst yes, song on is. the album. Mark no Striegel. Really. He wrote Striegel, that song. Yeah. With Mark, hello, Mark Striegel played it on Sirius XM today and was talking about because Ted Templeman produced the Doobie Brothers too. Yeah, they <laughs> couldn't. Fix, they couldn't. They couldn't do that. They couldn't fix that song, so they brought in Michael McDonald, and Michael McDonald brought in uh, the chorus and shit. Yeah. Oh. So, Oh, yeah, cool. you did. You look. You, never, look, you never looked at your vinyl where it says "In McDonald." Well, I don't think they had that on the first. I probably, I, pro I probably didn't put two and two together. That's probably what the problem yeah, was. That's totally Dan Hanley and, and Michael hey. McDonald. I mean, wow. You know what, guys? I, I, I will yell. I be there for all of you people here. <laughs> so you need to the street. I love. Hey, did you I guys love, ever I love the Doobie Brothers before Michael McDonald. Yeah. Did you guys Brothers. ever watch? Did you guys ever watch what's happening when the uh, rerun was uh, bootleg in their concert? Say, Rash. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They they were on an episode of What's Happening. Yeah, they were bootleg in the concert. Rerun was recording and it fell out, and they said, "What are you doing, man?" You know, <laughs> they're like autumn and shit. And now we can sit there with cell phones. I know, right? <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Did everybody uh, talk about uh, Gene Simmons said he didn't do it for the money? Uh, sure. I, 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 I think we kind of. I think we kind of blew. I'm sick and tired of talking about Kiss. Let's move on. I don't want to talk. Hey, Let's hey, move hey, on. By the way, Eric, 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 <laughs> Eric <laughs> Pen, 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 the next subject, I got a hot take. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. I wait is my favorite Van Halen song. That's a great song. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. That 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 is a good song. Favorite song. Hey, my favorite, my favorite Van Halen album is Diver Down, so. I, I'll I, I, like you, I like you, man. I like you. I like you. It's a great song, but I don't even think it would make my top three. My, awesome. my favorite Van Halen album is Fair Warning. And hey, my, I, favorite, I but my fa about... favorite Van Halen song is fucking Atomic Punk. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to talk about Gene Simmons. Eric, Eric, by the way, the pen's blue. What? what? The pen's I didn't talk blue about Gene Simmons. <laughs> All right, so let's. I didn't talk you. about Gene Simmons. No, go, go ahead. I asked you, that. you walked away, oh. Jerry. Go ahead. Talk I said one thing to say about Gene Simmons. <laughs> oh, what Next, the fuck? they did. All right, so that was our obligatory kiss news. How are the Panthers doing? They're kicking ass. They're kicking Columbus, major, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, oh. they, they're gonna win that game. Come on. All right. All right. right. So, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. So then we get to. Uh, I gotta get to this one first, and then I'll get to the sports news. Def Leppard frontman Joe Elliott has defended his band against accusations mm -hmm. using backing tracks during their concerts. Uh, I think it was Chuck Billy and uh, uh, that other D, Chris Holmes, oh, that accused oh. them of using backing tracks. And I'm just going to get to what he said. 
He said, I'm flattered because the standards must be different. That Our standards must, must be different than yours. For anybody that thinks we use backing tracks, it must mean that they hear us and they can't believe how good we are for real. What do you think about Fuck that, Eric? Oh, I don't think they're it. using backing tracks. I'll just I don't think so either because they sound like shit. Mark, they yeah, are. I saw them like in the shit. sixth. I saw them in the sixth row in 2018. First song they were they're using. They're using sweeteners. Tracks. They're all singing live though. Mark, Rocket sounded just like the album. <laughs> well, Rocket, they too much of course like they're the gonna album. use a sound no, effect. No, 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 no. Like the, the whoa, whoa. They were all it at the mic. The album. They were all at the mic. Could, That's funny. Yeah, you, 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 you hear when Steve Clark's voice. When I heard him sing Rocket, it sounded, it sounded a little off <laughs> yeah. when I yeah. saw him. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird that I could hear Steve Clark when I was seeing him in 2018. <laughs> ah, whatever. I'm they use bad I, um, Yeah, I mean, I really... They sound... I mean, Def Leppard, like Joe Elliott, at least, sounds like shit. Uh, but, I mean, come on, man. Like, those kind of vocals they do, they gotta be using some kind of tracks. And I'm sorry... I love Chuck Billy and Chris Holmes, and I think they have way more integrity than that fucking band. Fuck Def Leppard. You know, that band used to be cool. They're, they're like that cool guy that you used to hang out with in school that you're friends with, and they get, like, a new girlfriend. They start acting all weird and stop, and they, like, pretend like they're not your friend anymore. Fuck Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah your girlfriend tells you not to hang out with them anymore. Yeah, anymore. yeah, and they tell you to get cut your hair. They take down stop. your Facebook account. You can't have a yeah, Facebook Yeah, they get, like, a joint hair. Facebook. Like, you <laughs> makes your makes you write an album like Hysteria. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I love hysteria. Hysteria I do, I do, and I I don't know how I don't know how I got it, but I actually have a picture just for that That, album. That that is one of the best episodes we did on Freeform with uh Charles and fucking Lee, that hysteria episode. That was fucking hilarious. I was getting reamed. (laughs) I was getting fucking reamed on that episode. But uh that that one's fucking gay. Oh, fuck you. I love it. I <laughs> fucking love it. I saw that shit in the round with Tesla open up. For I did see that concert too. God damn. Concert was fucking good. amazing. The concert was good. Concert was fucking good. All those songs from Mysterious sounded great live, man. Dude, I, I need I, that. I, I, I had that I, on VHS. I, would, I need that, I would, man. I would question after they come think about it that they were using tracks back then too. Oh, Probably. Did. yeah. It's not too were. perfect to like. Look, it, it's cool. Well, they used, they they used, all they used was like uh, fucking Dirty Harry, what a Magnum does to your in the beginning of the show before the curtain drop. That's yeah. what I heard. But everything sounded great. They Joe Elliott had a little off moments on the show. So he always has an off moment. Joe Elliott. That means it's live. Thank you. No, see, Mark, when you say backing tracks, everyone assumes that they mean the lead singer. It's not the lead singer. They do what Motley Crue does, where it's freaking the backing tracks of the backing vocals from Shout at the Devil on the tour. Oh, it's smoke. Def Leppard does Travis. the same thing. Def Leppard does the exact same yeah. thing. All those, Showing all off those his freaking new bond. backing vocals are exactly ripped from the album. I don't, I do. Joe Elliott sounds like absolute shit. And I actually question, I'm not trying to knock on Rick Allen or anything, but there's, especially during the older songs, I don't look like he's playing those older songs on that drum kit. I'm sorry. Dude, they, right. they have different settings now. He could sound acoustic now on those electronic drums. Oh, no, yeah, but I'm man. saying he all, all the it was new, it was newer not back, playing all those things. It was newer back then, that technology. So I don't know, man. Yeah, it's gotten better. He's gotten better on on uh, they could change drums. Because the last album which you hated, Diamond Star Halos, Ugh. which we have a review Gross. coming up with Joseph Staub, which he didn't <laughs> Talk about any of the songs, really. Don't, that was don't spoil it. Don't spoil I'm it. I'm not going don't to spoil it. Yeah, I'm just giving you a preview, but that's coming up soon. But uh, fuck, got it. I I disagree. Do you have anything to say about that? You you and Eric already said things about Def Leppard. Well, so. I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue to Go talk. Uh, right. Particularly, yes. I've seen I've seen Chuck Belly. I've seen Testament live. I've seen Def Leppard live. Testament has more musical integrity in their pinky fingers. Than Def Leppard does in all nine of their arms. I think that <laughs> Testament, Testament <laughs> is absolutely for whatever you want to say about whether they're B tier thrash or whatever they are. I love Testament. I, I love Testament. I want to they smoke still, with that guy. They still absolutely kick ass live. Yeah, One uh, of the best shows yeah. I've ever seen was two years ago. The uh, was the uh, Bay Strikes Back tour with Testament, Exodus, uh, Death Angel. I want to see that show so bad. Freaking killer show. All three of those yeah. bands were absolutely tearing the joint down. And when there there is more passion in that room than you will ever find at a stadium show for Def Leppard. Damn right. 
There's no soccer mom singing along to Love Bites. I was ballroom. singing along to Love Bites. Why were you singing along that song? Dude, I like that song, song, man. He was oh, fucking man. lifting his shirt up. I've always everything. said that. Oh, when, Testament oh, playing, when, te- when Testament started playing, when when Testament started when Testament started playing Alone in the Dark, I had a religious moment. Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, what. they play Alone in the Dark. Now, game. now I will say when I when I see that every time I see Death Leopard, every time I see Death Leopard, I see a lot of fucking titties. So that's one good thing about him. Yeah, no, I don't look at the stage. I look what's behind me. <laughs> Well, some, I, I tend to look more because I, I don't like list, watching them live. Well, so about when I saw the stadium, too. when I saw the stadium tour, even though they sucked, Motley Crue, but I just wanted the shirt because it's, it's a logo. It's not an album, so that's cool. But they, they uh, two girls in the front row th- show their titties, yeah. and it was on a screen. I go, yeah, but it's like it's like seeing it a made kiss me forget what Vince sounded like for a second. Yeah, but that's it's like a, a kiss show. It's like, oh look, titties distract me from the shitty music. I'm well, the kiss to. tits are hanging. <laughs> The Molly well, Cruz kids you know, were younger. I'm, I'm not, I'm not no, saying they were all pretty, but <laughs> no, you got to go over. You got to go over to the you Molly go over Cruz to, still attracts the younger chicks. You, you got to go over to Vakken. You got to go to those European festivals. You want to, yeah. right? Good. There you go, dude. We should all get but money and they walk. They walk in there, fucking topless. We should go to download, man. You, you, I hate look, festivals, watch, but I go there. You watch this Scorpions at Wacken DVD. Every three minutes, they're showing somebody in the crowd with their tits out. <laughs> Worldwide yeah. Live, dude. Yes. That that DVD they had, Worldwide Live. I used to have it on Laserdisc. The girl, the Japanese girls were flashing them too, and, and you uh, couldn't tell. <laughs> the only one is good looking. That group is Matthias, and the other ones are ugly as fuck. <laughs> it's like you fucking. just you just made Eric tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Asian chick. Have you seen Worldwide Live? She no, starts I talking ha- and I she haven't. lifts up her yeah, she lifts up her top. I have not. When they're in Japan. The, I, 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 I didn't know that was from Japan. Japan. I, that was in Japan? Yeah. They no, yeah. Well, they filmed Worldwide Live. They just showed, like, scenes from them backstage and Holy Japanese shit. chicks were there and shit. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to write down a note. I used to have a... I used <laughs> Eric, to have Eric's going to take a note quick and just uh, <laughs> make sure that he uh, adds that to his viewing list. Hey, your yeah. wife is watching this, Eric. Don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and from forty five ten to forty six thirty, please <laughs> skip. Here, yeah. skip this. I love my wife. My wife is sexier than any woman on this planet. All right, Travis. Anything on uh, Joe Elliott saying they're I not using my, backing tracks? I do. I love my wife. She's beautiful. She's sexy. I'm proud of you. Eric. I love that photo, man. I love that photo. I love it too, man. Yeah, Charlie, hey, hey, I love this guy. Hey, when, when I saw you at the altar in that video, I started crying, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, I cried like a motherfucker. Uh, what's, what's, not what, what's not beautiful is Death Leopard is still around. And they're just a rock pause. I'm like, just stop. Just stop. If you're not playing <laughs> Coming Under Fire, I'm not interested. Dude, they played, Let right? it, let, they played Let It Go when I saw them. That was fucking amazing. Yeah, I hope we do. <laughs> oh, let it go. Rules. That's a great song. Love, it's like one it song out of like a thousand shitty songs. Oh, whatever. Yeah, it's like playing Race to Update the Penguins won in overtime. <laughs> yes. Carlson, I was watching, I saw it on my phone. Wait, does that voice sound like it's going in this chat? Hope I don't sound too loud. No, dude, you're kind of low in the mix. You yeah, are, you're kind yeah. of. You, it's kind of hard to hear you. Like, you're like yeah, Jason Newstead's bass and then Justice for All. <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of low in the mix, brother. Yeah, it sounds, sounds sound, a little. How do, I sound, how do I sound now? You sound like you're in a can. You yeah. Sound... Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right. But, God uh, damn, we lost him. Oh, I'll, I'll no, get him he, back. He's, but Jerry, he's turning his stuff off to come back on. Jerry, what do you think of uh, Joe Elliott saying they're not lip singing, man? I find it hard to believe, but um, I don't think they're lip syncing. I think they're adding tracks to it. And um, like I said, I question Rick Allen when he plays uh, older Def Leppard songs because I don't know. I've seen him try to do roles on the uh, little electronic. Maybe he's dealing with his feet, okay. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But What's the it? same. Same. Yeah. Back. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. There we so, go. Way there better. Go. There you go, man. I can't even hear that well. Yeah. Well, maybe you could, I don't know. You need plug-in headphones. Like I have. They're awesome. 
But uh, but I've heard from people. I've heard I've heard from Courtney Cronin and Dodd. She even said that she was backstage and she saw them using tracks or some shit like that. Remember, she's talked about that on the show. Remember, so um, I don't know. Well, I I I would question that. I think he, Joe Elliott's talking about his vocals. I I think they all sing together because the reason Vivian Campbell got that job is what they knew how he could play guitar. They wanted to hear how he would sound singing with them. So yeah. they might be know. all they might all be singing, but I still he think fuck, they're adding backing tracks to yeah, it. Yeah, they're enhancing it. Yeah. But dude, uh, one thing, fuck Vivian Campbell. Like, dude, you are so much better. <laughs> And I, I'm saying this because I love Vivian Campbell. You are so much better than that band. Get the fuck out of Def Leppard. Money, the, man. Yeah. He, he he does he does Def Leppard for money. He does fuck Last money. in Line for his passion. And I'm seeing yep. Last in Line in a couple weeks, so I'm excited. That third to see album that again. wasn't that good. I'm I'm hoping they play. Uh, they're they're playing at M3, so I'm hoping they play mostly Dio covers. Uh, I hope they don't play that third album, but but, dude, they did a fucking remake of fucking A Day in the Life. <laughs> That was fucking. It'll be bad. it'll be my second time seeing them. They were great the first time I saw them. Don't remake the Beatles unless no. you could do it. <laughs> it's like and most people day, cannot. No, most they people. Can't. Especially no. Day in the Life. Leave it alone. Leave, Leave it, it alone. alone. Don't even try. Wait, who did a Day in the Life? Uh, last, last in line. Last in line. Ugh. It was horrible, <laughs> dude. It was horrible. First album was great. Yeah, yeah. first album was awesome. Terrible. That's, that was what the, when the first time I saw them live was after the first album. So I'm hoping that they kind of stick to that because it's it's at M3, so they're playing a short set. They're they're yeah. in the middle of the day. I hope they play mostly Dio covers and maybe throw in like Devil and Me or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The first review of a Freeform Rock podcast was with me, the first Last in Line album, and then we redid it on the hundredth episode with my wife and and Lee. So uh, because I I wanted to, I said to celebrate. My first, our first episode, we did it on our hundredth episode. So we did two. Well, then we're gonna have to do that again soon. Then we are. Yeah, we're gonna have to now. Last in line. Oh, every hundred. Yeah, we didn't do it for two hundred or three hundred. We got to do it. We're on four hundred. We're over four hundred now, dude. (laughs) We could do it for five (laughs) hundred. You know that'd be cool. You know, it's kind of it's kind of related to last in line because there was a member. There's a band called Kill Devil Hill. You ever, guys ever heard of them? Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the Chad Gray guy? No, no, that's not him. Yeah. That's the other one. Okay, my bad. Oh, yeah. Screw my vein. <laughs> I love Mud Vein. Oh, fuck, <laughs> fuck Mud Vein. Yeah, fuck Mud Vein. Fuck Mud Vein. Hey, you don't have yeah. to lie to kick it now. <laughs> kick it! <laughs> kick it. I love Mud Vein. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so let's get to... uh. <laughs> yeah, we're getting late on this, man. I, yeah, I mean, let's yeah. get to the top. Let's, let's get, get to the topic. Let's get to the topic, topic man. Cut it out. Yep. So, Jerry, we're gonna start from like our seven to one, and our yep. one one is the survivor, and then we yep. have a bonus. Uh, when do we talk about the bonus? Uh, check? do when you do your first person, uh, also include your girl. So, okay, you, yeah, okay. Cool. All right, let's go. Let's start out, Eric. Let's is it go. your show? Why don't you go first? All right, man. So for my first character, you know, we talk about, you know, how this is like all, you know, that movie had a bunch of big dudes, big badass, like muscular, you know, action heroes. But they had two members of that team that really weren't like that big, but they were kind of there for different roles, you know, and you, you can't just have them all be these big badass dudes. You got to have like some guy that's kind of maybe the comedy relief character and some guy that's maybe smaller and stealthier. And uh, being a big fan of like uh, a lot of martial arts movies, um, I wanted to go with someone that maybe had some of that martial arts ness, but also to a person that had um, like the person that could be like a little bit of the comic relief, a guy cutting, uh, cracking some jokes and uh, being funny and just having great chemistry with these other guys interacting with them. And I, I wanted to go with a Bruce Lee character. Or even Sunny Chiba, but also too, I wanted to keep that that comedy element in there. I wanted this person to be able to like joke around, and I went with none other than Wang Chi from Big Trouble in Little China, played by Dennis Dunn. <laughs> I love, I love what his a great character. movie. I great love movie. Big Trouble in Little China. I do have I, that on Blu-ray. I love me too. I love Wang Chi. I I think he's great. He's kicking all kinds of ass in that movie. I have that Fuck. same Blu-ray. How'd you know that was going to be brought up? Oh. <laughs> I didn't. I just reached it off the shelf. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Well, no, I want Wang Chi because oh, okay. you know you can't just have all be big, muscular, badass dudes. Yeah, even though Wang Chi's a badass though, but you can't have be all these big dudes. You gotta have like a stealthier guy that's gonna do some karate moves, some like cool shit like that, some cool martial arts. But also to the thing with uh, Wang Chi uh, and just the actor that portrays him, Dennis Dunn, he's very funny. And like I can just see him interacting with the other characters that I have picked out and like just throwing one liners at them, throwing jokes at them. And you need that in a good action movie. So I went with Wang Chi as my first guy on the team from Big Trouble Little China. Great, Ooh. great character played by uh Dennis uh Dennis Dunn. And for my woman, the girl that they pick up. So in my movie, instead of being in uh what is it, Columbia mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, mine's going to be in ch like somewhere in like Asia or China. And I am going with, and Mark's going to hate this, but I'm a child of the nineties going with Shelby Wu. Shelby Wu, baby from mystery files. Shelby Wu. I think she'd be great, man. She'd be like, she's set. She's kind of cute. You know, not as cute as my wife. Went with but... Lucy Liu, somebody I know. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going with Shelby Wu. Cause I gotta go. I gotta be me. But, uh, you know, Shelby Wu's pretty cute, man. Not as cute as my wife. I but, thought we uh, put the, the bonus chick at the end. No, no you with put, the no, first picky uh, first, Oh, okay, I got it now. Yeah, but now Shelby Wu, man, she kind of cute, not as cute as my wife. And, uh, you know, and she's she's she could work with the team. You know, she could, like, kind of give them some clues because, the you know, the girl in the first movie, she kind of she kind of helped them out a little bit. You know, uh, you know, she gave kind of a backstory. And I feel Shelby Wu could do that because Shelby Wu was solving mysteries <laughs> You know, on that Nickelodeon show. So that's the girl that. I'm going with. So yeah, Shelby Wu. Oh. And then my first guy in my team is Wang Chi from Big Trouble. So who who wants to go next? Joseph. From Yay! one John from one John Carpenter movie to another. Of course there has to be a wrestler on the team. Oh god. And yeah. of course, I'm picking Roddy Piper as Nada from uh, They Live. Damn Ooh. hell yeah. I have, have to live on 4K, Eric. Nice. I have a Blu-ray. Well, so do I. I, I to, got the I had 4K pick... Blu-ray. Well, I mean, what better? Who better to be the Jesse Ventura character than Roddy Piper? Um, just, I mean, he's a like he's kind of the comedy figure, but yeah. he can kick ass too and chew bubble gum. <laughs> um, and so he's my first guy. I didn't really have time. One to of think the best of a lines girl. in a movie. Um, so I didn't. Really, I didn't pick a girl. Pick a hot girl. I, I cannot <laughs> think of hot girls in action movies right now. They're all kind of like the main. I, I picked from all, all genres. I didn't pick. A, I even uh -huh. picked a music person. Yeah. So there you if go. you think of, if you think of one somewhere through the episode, they can throw her in. Sounds good. Who was well, who was the girl that played uh, um, fucking a uh, Total Recall? His girlfriend, not Sharon Stone, the other one. Ooh. What was oh, her name? Man. Spanish lady. Oh, Cachita Alonso. No, it wasn't her. That was that was the other one. That was a Running Man. Ooh. Yeah, she was uh, in Running I Man. The, I love the Running Man. Yeah, that's a great movie. The I gotta get that name? on four. Ray, 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 Rachel Tickett in Ray Don Chong? No, I think her name is Rachel Ticket. Uh, Tick, Rachel Tick Rachel Tickleton. Yeah. Fine. She's a hottie too. If that's I'm right. picking if I'm picking a girl from any genre, I'll pick Salma Hayek from, from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, oh there you go. Good one. I'll put yeah. her in there. Hey, All right. Radon Chong was in Commando. Yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, that's why I say I, I should her. have brought that up in the Peace of Mind review. <laughs> when we were so talking you about that. You're done? You're done with your talk, Jason? Joseph? Yep. All right, Travis, you're next, man. All right, thank you. The first person I'm going to choose, he's not really a fighter, but he just looks, he looks like a badass in everything he's in. I'm going with the late Harry Dean Stanton. Oh, nice one. Uh, and I'm choosing his character from the first Alien. Ooh. All right, hell yeah, that's cool. I love him, man. I would have picked him from Repo Man. I would have picked him as Brain from uh Repo Man. From oh yeah, I love them in Christine. Escape from New York. Oh, well, that's Christine. a good one too. Brain Christine. I have that on DVD. Escape from New York. And my uh, my chick in the movie is gonna be <laughs> one of my all time crushes, Gene Triplehorn. Oh fuck it! Yeah. Oh, from Waterworld and shit, right? From Waterworld and from yeah. uh, Basic Instinct and that shitty uh, Firm movie, but she was hot in that. Oh, one. the Firm movie was great. <laughs> Tom Cruise, man. The only movie Tom Cruise made bad was Eyes Wide Shut. 
I'm not yeah, a big Tom Cruise fan. See, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm with Eric. I, I'm not a Tom Cruise fan. He's not. Yeah. A fan. I don't that's like him, but I love his even, movies. It's not <laughs> even not, like he doesn't make a bad movie. It's, it's, it's business, it's not taps, even, Top Gun, Top Gun, Mission Maverick. Impossible think, movies. And the oh, thing right is, there. the thing is, it's not even the fact that I hate like stunts. this. I don't hate the whole like science. It's not even the fact of the whole Scientology thing, which I can't stand. But I just never liked his movies. Period. Yeah, I don't they're, like. They're, yeah. You don't like they're. Legend with Tim Curry? I don't oh, that, like was, that was yeah, pretty bad. bad. That was a That's bad. a great fucking movie. I, the only reason I, anyone I, likes I, that is I, because of the effects on Tim Curry's makeup, because it looks yeah, awesome. So it looks cool. I mean, yeah. the Mission Impossible movies keep getting better, in my opinion. Yeah. So. See, do. I'm 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 too big of a James Bond fan. I can't get into those. Yeah, James Bond has got fucking... docile, man. The last movie. Was well, I cool. hated the last two. Yeah. yeah. The last James. To me, uh, like uh, Mission Impossible is just Americans trying to make James Bond. And it just doesn't fucking work. Dude, Mission uh, Impossible I'll, 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 was before James Bond in a television series. Mark, <laughs> James Bond but, was from uh, the late, the early fifties. What are you talking? All right, about? Oh, the oh, books. But, uh, but uh, Jean Triplehorn, man, I just every time I see those lips, she has like little bow and Whoa. arrow shaped lips. She is so she's uh, so beautiful, and she was in a sh- she was in a show with Bill Paxton about Mormons having sister wives on HBO. That was a pretty good show too. <laughs> but uh, my runner up was going to be Leia Thompson. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, she was pretty. Nice. She was a pretty badass in Red Dawn, though. She, she was. Bad. Yeah, I love Red Dawn. That's a great movie. Yeah. All right, who's next? Mark. All right, so I picked my bonus chick first. Yeah, go pick, for it. No, I pick yeah, my first. Say, say which one you want first. Yeah. My okay. Well, I'm gonna pick my my seventh. I'm going comedy here. I'm going somebody I grew up with. I'm Kinda gonna like pick me in a bit. I'm gonna pick fucking uh like a chef, a cook, fucking guy living with two chicks. I'm gonna pick Jack yeah. Tripper from Three's Company, man. Fuck John yeah. Ripper. Oh, what? Yeah. You gotta what? have some Who's comedy. Jack Tripper? Hey, I like. Hey, I like it. I like everyone getting creative. I love it. I love Jack. Jack Tripp. He's gonna cook the predator Coco Ben. He's gonna kill him. <laughs> so there you go, man. And go and to my... the Regal Beagle afterwards. Regal Beagle, yeah. man. And then my side chick, if like and if you ever watch those Hardy's Carl's Jr. commercials, Kate Upton. Oh Huge man, those are fucking yeah, boobs everywhere. Cool. Yeah, fuck yeah. And especially she would go with Jack right there, man. You know, you know, he was a brown, fucking some blonde boobs. So there you go. Kate Upton's my side chick. All right, my yeah. first one, my number, oops, hold up. My number seven will be, all right, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're going to need somebody with smart who can make a fucking howitzer out of a log and a couple of rocks <laughs> and a vine. All right, you're going to need fucking MacGyver out there. Come on, oh, man. Oh, I didn't think of him. That's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, he can build anything out of anything. So, you'll, I mean, you're going to run out of ammo out there. He'll fucking build you a fucking cannon, dude. I mean, Love the show. Uh, I think he's probably, you know, one of the more intelligent uh, people that I have picked. He's better than yeah. Stargate. But yeah. And then my my side chick is, is fucking just Sydney Sweeney by herself. I don't give a fuck what movie she was in. Just <laughs> And it's set in the world of my bedroom. So I, I remember I was watching that Saturday Night Live. I said, you have oh, boob geez. shots from that show. <laughs> like, oh, this uh, is not. Who the fuck I mean, is saw- this? I mean, I'm 53, only 53, and she's doing like 28. But damn, come on, man, you gotta give credit where credit's due. <laughs> See, I, I did. I I was only including stuff from movies, but if I was including stuff from TV shows, I probably would have put the whole A team in there. <laughs> well, Mark, didn't you tell him it could be a character from anything? He, 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 he said yeah, I just, I just went with. I just wrestler. no, I'm just saying personally, I went with movies. Uh, uh, movie okay, okay, okay. Um, but if I was including TV shows, I would have thrown six million dollar man in there. I would have thrown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the old '70s Incredible Hulk in there. Oh, Lou I, I almost put Morgan Freeman as God, but that he would just destroy him, right? <laughs> so I had to take that. Oh, yeah, yeah I did, I, that's, that's why I didn't put superheroes in it because you know. Yeah, because Morgan Freeman's stuff, God, so. he could just snap the Predator out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, I only have one non-human character on here. But uh, anyway, Eric, you're next, man. All right, man. So my next character, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess uh, this character would kind of be like me, the Jesse Ventura type character. Um, and I had to go with a fucking wrestler. Now, I, I may have two wrestlers on here, but I had no, to go with a wrestler. I had to go with a wrestler, man. I'm like, who would fit that Jesse Ventura role? Like, who would be the guy that, like, doesn't give a shit? Who would be the kind of guy, like, he'd be trying to offer, like, you know, chewing tobacco to them, be like, oh, a bunch of slack-jawed faggots around here. 
you know, and uh, yeah, I said faggots, go ahead and cancel me. I I'm exempt. I'm grandfathered in to keep saying that word. We I'm like exempt. gay people on this show. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm, I, I be, up, I'm being Edwin. Okay. I'm being when Edwin was, right now. When I go. when I was growing up, that word was fine to say. You know, it's not a personal attack on something. You were, just, you were quoting the movie. You were quoting yeah. the movie. Yeah, I I am grandfathered in to keep saying that. So fuck you all. Uh, Can I say faggotry? Faggotry. Yeah, Pure faggotry. But yeah. So I'm thinking of that character that's that badass, like the guy that'd be like, I ain't got time to bleed. I'm going with Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah. So, like he'd be the guy like he'd be like after like the big fight and everything when they blow up all those motherfucking like whatever country they were he'd be cracking a beer like i got steve wisers <laughs> steve wisers like what what yeah so i'm going with stone cold steve austin baby he would be the yeah, guy with the big machine gun yeah. uh you know he could just be stone cold you know that's the character he plays i loved him in that uh one movie he was in the condemned that was pretty cool so stone cold steve austin gonna be on my yeah team. yeah stone right. cold what uh what? joseph all righty so i had to pick as one of the many so uh, what i tried to stay away from i didn't pick any of the traditional like 80s action movie actors i didn't there's no arnold oh. on my list there's, there's no, no arnold on my list either there's no Sly Stallone on my list. No Arnold, no, there's no none Stallone. of those guys on my list. I wanted I wanted to go for some different people. I wanted to go for some kind of out of left field picks. So here is someone who I think deserves a lot more attention as a great actor who's been in literally every movie ever made. And particularly this character has been in a lot of movies of a particular director. And that would be Danny Trejo as Machete. Whoa, hell yeah. So that's my next pick. I machete mean, kills. Machete. Machete I kills. I love him, man. I mean, I love Danny Trejo. Yeah, Me too. I had to have Danny Trejo. I mean, oh, you, you think of an action movie, you think of Danny Trejo. I mean, you think you all these different characters he's played over the years. He he fits perfectly. So I, I want to go try Trejo's tacos in L.A., but I hate L.A. Oh, I love tacos. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I've, I've heard he. I've heard he has a great restaurant. He has a donut yeah, shop very, too. I heard, yeah, I heard it's very successful donut too. Shop. Really he has, has a donut so. shop too. He's got a taco. It was actually. Restaurant. It was on. Uh, it was on that. What's that show? That guy Fiera dude mm -hmm. hosts. Uh, yeah, diner drivers and dives. Yeah, yeah he was that on that show. show so yeah. I've been to one of yeah. those diners in uh, Victorville. That guy Fiera went to was pretty good. Nice. Yeah, but no, Danny Trejo. I mean, he is He's cool. He knows yeah. how to make money. He knows how to make yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. All right, Travis. All right. Well, Jerry, I'm going to match with you because I also have MacGyver on my list. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because MacGyver, MacGyver kicks ass. He does. Yep. Absolutely, man. You need brains and you need like, somebody to build fucking anything out of anything. So, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Mark. I got to pick this character. I have the box set of these movies. I love them all. Dirty Harry. Clint Eastwood. Oh, I like yeah. to see him uh, make my day, Predator. <laughs> you know, make my day. This here is a forty-four magnum. I, I think I'd rather have. I think I'd rather have, I think I'd rather have Philo. Handgun in the world. I think I'd rather have Philo Beto than Dirty Harry. I don't know something about his uh, character. Uh, but, right turn, Claude. Yeah, exactly. But Dirty <laughs> Harry's got the catch line, you know, to True. destroy yeah. shit. I have Clint would come to my list, but it's neither of those characters. Oh, oh well, they wow. have the Black Widows in that in that movie too. Yeah, so like, I love the Deadpool. That's a fucking. Uh, that's a great movie, but uh, fucking. That's that's my number uh, six, Jerry. And you never fucking put ketchup on a hot dog either, man. Never, never, fucking never. <laughs> I did tonight. Sorry, I had a no. I, I always, I always put ketchup on my hot dogs. <laughs> so do I, man. What's wrong with everyone? I put, I put ketchup in mustard and relish. I put pool. Oh, that's disgusting. That's you know what sucks fun. on hot dogs is mayonnaise. Everybody wants mayonnaise. For my, wife oh, likes, my, yeah, wife Latino, my wife likes. My wife does that. Latina, yeah, let, Latinos do that, and I don't fucking get. They it. always ask for the corn dogs. Do you have mayonnaise? No, we don't have mayonnaise. I they don't like they, mayonnaise. The only time that I will not put hot, ketchup on my hot dogs is I have like chili hot on them. I'll, mm. I'll leave it. Oh, I'll chili leave dog, them. fucking chili rules. Dogs. Well, a, chili dogs. I put I put mustard on the bun. And I do too. Yeah, I That's, put the chili. There's, dog, there's yeah. a yeah. There's the a cheese. restaurant. There's a restaurant right in my town that some of the best chili dogs you'll ever have, and they do the mustard, the chili, the fresh homemade chili sauce, and then it's yeah. like is they it, cut up it, an entire onion on your hot dog. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it Pat's dogs? No, <laughs> like Tom Kiefer endorses. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh man. So where are we at, Jerry? Oh, yeah, we're done. All right. Well, you're gonna need maybe a helicopter pilot to get you around a little bit. Oh. And you're gonna need somebody a little crazy, maybe a little howling mad. Oh. You're gonna need HM Murdoch from the A team, dude. Oh yeah, Murdoch's one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Oh, I yeah. talked to my coworkers about who they would pick. So I was telling <laughs> about this episode, and like one of them picked Murdoch. Yeah, I got Murdoch the whole A team awesome. over there. <laughs> he would fucking out crazy the predator, and he gets you from A to B, man. So you got to have somebody like that on your team. So H M Murdoch. Yeah. I watched every episode the premiere night of that shit. That one in Dukes of Hazard. Uh, chips. Nobody got killed. Millions of bullets. Nobody chips. got killed. <laughs> except for except for the one episode in very the, end, I think the last one, one of the general, no, the right, general, yeah, the season, end of season four, yeah, the yeah, they shot killed. bullets around everyone until like, like just scare them off, or like or like a main character, like a like one like something would happen at the beginning of the episode for them to get there, right. somebody get killed, yeah. and then yeah. they come <laughs> and then just shoot around everybody. <laughs> yeah. All right, number five, Eric. Number five, man. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big John Carpenter fan. I already picked uh character from big trouble and for this character i'm going way back to one of john carpenter's first films this is like literally one of my like this guy's up there as one of my all-time favorite characters i love all these anti-hero characters john carpenter has and uh oh i think joseph knows but man i love this character i love his one-liners like all of his quotes i quote this guy all the time if i have a son i'm gonna name him after this character uh to my wife we are naming him. We if we have a son, we're naming him this. It's all about none other than Mr. Napoleon Wilson from Assault on Precinct 13. Yes, he knew it. Look at that shit. Fuck I, I have that same Blu-ray. He but he's a magician, man. He's a total he magician. Is, he knew, but yeah, yeah I, I, I Wilson, thought Andy man, was good. I love Napoleon Wilson. I love like his his calm, cool nature. You know, he's get he gets all the ladies. He's just like all his one-liners, all of his little quotes are just so cool. And there's so much mystery behind him. You don't know everything about him. And that's just what makes him so cool. I love that about Carpenter and all of his characters. But he's just such a badass anti-hero, I don't give a fuck kind of guy. But he's also real calm and cool. Like he's not like, you know, he's not gonna be like stone cold anti-hero where he's flipping people off and cussing them out. He's cool, calm, collected. Or he's just he just wants to smoke. Like, hey, anybody got a smoke? Uh, you know, and just just that iconic shot of him where, like, you know, he gets tossed the shotgun, and just boom, 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 you know? Napoleon Wilson, man, such a badass, one of my all-time favorite characters. If I, uh, you know, to my wife, Mary, if we have a son, we are naming him Napoleon Wilson. Fuck, so, I, yeah. just shot, I just thought I should have picked Snake Plissken. Fucking A. Who All knows, right. he might show up on some people's list. Yeah, uh, maybe. All right, Joe. But he was the prototype uh. Snake Plissken. He was, he was. All right, so kind of in the vein of what Jerry just said, you know, depending on where you're set, you might need a helicopter pilot. Well, if you're set in the city, you might need a getaway driver. And who else to be your getaway driver but the prototype of the movie Car Chase? Lieutenant Frank Bullet, played by Steve McQueen from the oh, film Bullet. Great movie. Great, great movie. Great character. I agree. One of the few. Do I have any other cops on my list? Hold on. Uh, I got. I got a cop. Yeah, yeah I, I got do. a couple cops. I have another cop. Got, on my, well, I, I had couple, dirty. I already had dirty hair. I have a couple so. that would be considered cops, depending on where you're at. Um, but the car chase in that movie became like the prototypical movie car chase. So if you need a getaway driver, go for Bullet. I love that movie too. Great movie. All right, so right. Travis Patty. All right. Well, I have a driver too, and it's gonna be Mel Gibson, Mad Max, baby. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Good Max choice. Yes. He's just batshit crazy and he'd be perfect as the driver. I got the DVD with his original I, Australian accent. I do have a Mel Gibson character on my list though. Oh hell yeah. I, I love Mad Max. Huge fan. I cool. did. I took I, I took Riggs off. Why? Because I had something else I wanted. All right. <laughs> All right. That's a good pick there. All right. So Mark. Mark. I'm going to go with, you know, in space, no one could hear you scream. Hey. I'm picking Ripley 
from Alien. Fuck yeah. <laughs> she beat the Alien. Maybe she can beat the Predator. Yeah, yeah man. Well, yeah. she's not number one, so she ain't beating the Predator. She... Well, I don't I don't know if she actually beat... The, well, I guess she beat the she original. Did. Know, she didn't beat them all together, though. The Alien got her. But she did get killed know. eventually, yeah. you know, and they resurrected her. <laughs> well, she you sacrificed know. herself. Sacrificed Give her props. Her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In so an Rick, awful she's movie. A bad, uh, she's a badass. Yeah. More on that later. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead, Jerry. My my number five. You're gonna need a little brawn and a little craziness in a different way than Murdoch, man. See if you guys can guess the movie from this line. Oh, here. I already know who you're talking about. You better flush out your head, new guy. This isn't about freedom. This is a slaughter. If I'm gonna get my balls blown off for a word, my word is poontang. Who am I talking about? Animal Mother from fucking uh, Full Metal Jacket, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't seen that movie in years, and I love it, too. Played by awesome Adam Baldwin, who was also in My Bodyguard, which is a weird movie on its own, but... Was, he was uh, also in Fleet. Chuck. Chuck is a great yeah. series. If you are I right. thought he was a badass in that movie. He was, he was a little nutball. You could tell he was very... Uh, and Serenity. He was in Serenity. Yeah. yeah. He's very... He's fucking awesome soldier to have on your team. He'd be loyal to you if you were your friend, so you need somebody like that. Uh, he protect he protect the team. I'm sure, if you'd like to, of course. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, that's mine. I'm taking Adam uh, blue, uh Animal oh. Mother from Full Metal Jacket. And uh, he ain't related to Alec Baldwin, so there you go. I don't think they are. Yeah, they're they not. Are, are they they aren't. No. no. Okay, so number four, Eric. Uh, number four. Um, this is a pick that we've already heard. I had to go with him, man, but uh, because he's just he's such a cool character. It's a great movie that he's in. Um, and, and come on, man, it's Ryan Piper, baby. Uh, you know, <laughs> I gotta go John Nada from uh They Live. I mean, Good I just one. love that movie. Uh, you know, I think he would be great. He'd also be another guy that brings some comedy into the movie. But, you know, Ryan Piper, man, he's just crazy and he's hilarious. He always has you laughing, and he's just such a great character, man. So I, I had to have him on my team. So I, I technically got two wrestlers on my team. He you know, should have been a bigger was- actor, man. Should have been. He was bigger. really good. I think just unfortunately he got cast in some really shitty roles. Um, after they live, well, Hulk but, Hogan's uh, movies were horrible. Oh, Hulk oh, Hogan's Commando Hulk ruled. <laughs> but no, I, uh, I got, Commando. But yeah, John Nader from They Live, man. I mean, that's a fucking amazing movie. I mean, how can you not like They Live? It's such a great movie, masterpiece. So yeah, John Nader. Uh, so me cool. and Joseph Stabra are the first ones to have uh the same guy on our our team. All right, Joseph. All righty, so. When I sat down to do this, I had to include a Clint Eastwood character. But who to include? I mean, I could go with Dirty Harry. I could go with the man with no name. I could go with the preacher from Pale Rider. I could go with William Money from Unforgiven. But I decided I'm going to go with the war hero himself, Josie Wales from The Outlaw Josie Wales. Great movie. Great just watch that movie not too One of his ago. most yeah. underrated great movies. That is an awesome oh, right. That's not movie. Amazing, about movie. Movie. Much. Amazing movie. And that was his one of his first, one of his earlier ones that he directed himself. And it, it's a great character. Just wants revenge for his family, wants to live yeah. alone, and ends up building this family around him, but just goes out there and just just kills people. <laughs> And I'd like to see that matchup of the Predator versus Josie Wales. So uh, <laughs> my number four, I had to include a Clint Eastwood character. So many different options, but I decided to go with Josie Wales. All right, Travis. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll never get tired of that. All right. <laughs> Steven Seagal, Mason Storm from Hard to Kill. Ooh, that's a good one. I love me some Steven Seagal, man. I know he's a terrible actor, but man, he's got some kick ass. <laughs> and a terrible person. He is a shitty and a person. person. Holy Dude, he shit. couldn't keep Kelly LeBlanc I got, satisfied. I got, a fun, I got a funny story about Steven Seagal if I could share real quick. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. My my buddy who's since passed on in like the nineteen like the late nineties, he actually went to one of Steven Seagal's Hollywood parties. And Steven Seagal had all these women around him. And then he was just hanging out. And then Steven Seagal went up to him and he's like, you're still here? And he just basically, he basically told my friend to just get the fuck out. Oh, what a dick. Fuck him. I know. But man, I love his movies. Out for Justice. I do. I, I, 
I think Under Siege is one of my favorite. Oh, I was movies just going to say in. Under Siege. Is Second one sucked, Under but the first one was great. really good. Yeah. But yeah, I love Steven Seagal despite him being a total dick. Right. I, yeah. I love. Oh, I agree. Stuff. Yeah, you make good movies. Yeah, so, so, Mark, Mark, I'm gonna go for. I, 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 I know everybody says he's not that great an actor. He's not. I think he's only made one bad movie in Johnny Mnemonic. But uh, I'm gonna go for John Fucking Wick here. Keanu Reeves oh. or. And look, I, I got the I got I, the coin, the Blu-ray. It's got the I have fucking coin. never seen a single John Wick movie. What the fuck life. is wrong with you? I haven't seen not, John Wick. What is either. wrong with this guy kills a person with a pencil? They're like what on five now or something Dude, like that? Dude, I've seen four, millions of people get killed with a fucking Dude, pencil. No, I, I just never got along with around to it, man. I'm not Dude, saying it's this bad is, or good. These yeah. four movies somebody... are great. I got the fourth one on 4K. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. I, I love Keanu Reeves. I just I'm not like it's not one of those movies I feel like I urgently need to see, you know. Eric, you know? Eric, please watch Sean Wick one and get back to me on that, please. Yeah, I I'll, I I'll know what you I eventually. know what you like. I know what you like, Eric. I'll get around to it eventually. If you don't it, it ain't the fucking Matrix after three after That's two. why I, that's I, the Matrix is what No, did no, it no. It, it ain't the fucking the it, Matrix. It, it ain't the, the fucking, fucking Matrix. Matrix. This is fucking I action. I hate the Matrix. This is he, Bruce. This is I fucking bigger than Bruce Matrix. Willis here. This is fucking I love diehards, but fuck, these movies are better. <laughs> See, you know, I, I I've, I've heard I've heard too. a lot of really good things about John Wick, but it just it, it, it there's so many of these stupid 2010s action movies. Yeah. No, no, no. Right? This, yeah. this it just get, not... it just gets lost in that kind of shuffle that I just don't really I don't really have the I want to buy you guys all out. John Wick because I you know you guys buy, like you buy it. them for me if you want. Yeah, yeah you, you can buy them for me. me. Gary, you have HBO Max, don't you? No. Buy it for me. It's streaming. <laughs> this is streaming. John Wick's are streaming. Watch them. Yeah, Keanu well, Reeves, John Wick is my number four. Uh, my favorite right. Keanu movie is Speed. Oh, Mine's like Point Break. Mine's Point Speed. Break. Oh, Point Break point rules break. too. Uh, actually, no, fucking... no. My favorite, uh, mine is uh, Bill and Ted. Mine's Sorry. Parenthood. Parenthood. Oh, that's a good one. Talk about a yeah. shitty remake, fucking Point Break, man. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was gross. That wasn't even the same movie. You know what? No. I saw that Roadhouse one. It was okay when I watched it, but I go, it had no consistency. It had it no was really... just it was, it was just fun. That's it, all. But, I mean, but it had about, no back, it. it had no backstory. It's like in the first one, it goes like they talked to Dalton. And, oh, I thought you were bigger. You know, there was good fucking jokes in the original one. This one was like... And it has Terry Funk. I mean, like... Yeah, yeah, Terry <laughs> yeah. Funk, baby. It had... Conor McGregor yeah. was actually... Well, he was basically playing... No, he sucked. Movie, but... He sucked. <laughs> funny God damn, movie, he sucked. Talk about a guy that could, like, a really versatile actor that could be in so much different stuff would be... um, Oh, my God, why? Patrick Swayze. So know, many right? different kinds yeah. of movies. Next uh, to uh, Ken, yeah. Next to Ken is one of... The, with yeah. Liam Neeson and Bill Paxson is one of the greatest movies he ever yeah. made. Next to Ken is a fucking great movie. And nobody talks about Next to Ken. It pisses me off. Great. Yeah. Helen Hunt is in there as Patrick Swayze's wife, too. It's pretty good, Ben. All right. That's my pick? I think yep. so. Pick. So, Mark, what do, you th- what do you think of the band Ghost? Love Ghost. Now, Mark, I'm asking Mark. What do you, oh, think why you, you know the answer to this. Why do I have to answer this? It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I'm going with the. I got to go with the fucking rock, dude. Come on, yeah. man. One of the, the biggest rock. action fucking stars nowadays, man. Charisma, out fucking smart. You need somebody. I almost picked. Fucking, I almost picked the rock. You need somebody to lay this fucking smackdown on the fucking predator. And who better do that than the fucking rock, dude? Absolutely. I'm not doing any of his. I'm doing his char- wrestling character. Not yeah, his wrestling character is about. Yeah, I don't. I, I know. I hate his I, movies. Can you smell what The Rock is? I love that movie with the guy from the American Pie movie, The Rundown. Fucking great movie, right? Oh, there. Uh, what? The, uh, Stifler, right? Stifler, yeah, that was a great yeah. fucking. Movie. And hell, Sean... if, if the the stuff The Rock's doing right now as a heel, put him. Put oh him man, against the Predator. He's fucking. <laughs> Hey man, I'm impressed with Hunter so far, dude. I think he's doing a great job, man. He's doing awesome. Hey, I'll admit, man. I mean, I'm still really not the biggest into like you know modern wrestling anymore. But like, uh, you gotta admit, man, they they did pretty damn WWE's good. WWE's doing a good job right they now. They did a really good job. They're on a run. Yeah, and they a- really got some good attention. AEW. Did you guys watch last WrestleMania? I love it. 
Did you guys I actually watch? watch first, I, mean, I watched night two. Oh, this will like be it. real quick. This will be a real quick, Mark. Yeah, I watched the night two. I thing just about go, it's that going was, over my head. That's all. I'm the saying. coolest thing about that was what Seth Rollins did. I had no idea mm -hmm. why. That he was, was doing great that. storytelling. But I remember because that's what he wanted him to do. That yep. you know, that's what he did to Roman Reigns a few yep. years ago. Yeah, so I fucking love. I I didn't figure it out. I thought maybe John Moxley would be back too. That that's what I thought. But I'm like, when they played the Shield music, I'm like, there's no freaking way. Then I figured There's out no why well, I figured out why Seth did that. And that was to get into Roman's awesome. head. That was yeah. good storytelling. Uh but yeah, yeah I, I love like Re Ripley and like I love the oh, man, Warriors awesome. and uh EO Sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just hey, yeah. props to them, man. I'm glad they're doing good. I mean, I'm still really Carrie's, not that Carrie, into it, but still I love it. Fucking the Kabuki Warriors. Carrie Sign, man. She's mm -hmm. fucking hot. Yeah, man. Kari mm -hmm. Sane and As Asuka. Mm -hmm. Asuka, yep. Mm -hmm. Asuka. And that outfit Dakota Kai was wearing. Holy shit. Mm. <laughs> that was mm. nice. Anyway, Mark, sorry. We didn't mean to bore you yeah. there, buddy. Well, I'm still we I'm I still weirded out that you guys haven't watched Sean Wick. That's about it. <laughs> ah, that's it. We're, we're, we're too busy tripping. watching Rhea Ripley. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. Still, I'm we're still too tripping. busy watching mommy. We're watching real stuff. <laughs> we're watching real stuff. Mom, watch Mom, John Wick on one and get back to me because yeah. you motherfuckers are gonna right. say sorry, Mark. You were right. Thank you. I'll I will eventually. No, you do it now. I want to know. <laughs> I'm fucking pissed right. off right now. Go ahead. I'm gonna have to do my badass female, and we've—I think a couple of you've already picked characters from the Alien franchise. But to me, the single most badass character was fucking Private Vasquez, man, and fucking Aliens, dude. Mm -hmm. She yeah. was a badass chick, dude, man. She was fucking hanging with John What's Connor's that? stepmom from Terminator Two, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck! But that yeah. Movie. Yeah, don't get into Terminator 2. I'm tired of Eric talking about it. <laughs> well, yeah, you need, you need a badass muscular chick that can just fucking kick yeah. ass, man, hang with the boys, and I think she could do it. So that's my pick. That's a great All choice. Right. Right on. All All right. Right. Great one. Eric. All right. So I didn't pick it. Like I said, uh, spoiler alert, you know, when Joseph mentioned it, I, I also didn't pick an, an Arnold character, uh, which is a shock, too, because I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, but... I did go a character in from one of his movies and a character from my favorite movie of all time. And this is the reason why I think the first movie is the only good movie in the series. And I'm talking about the character of Kyle Reese. I played by Michael Bean. I fucking love Kyle Reese, man. I think he's amazing. Um, I think he just adds so much to that first Terminator movie. And like, he's severely missing in all the other sequels, and I feel that's why the sequel. He was in just... Terminator Two. If you got the extended version, but it doesn't matter, Mark. His it's picture like a small, was in a small it. Fucking no, scene. he was in there leading Sarah Connor out of the fucking insane. Oh my god, god. great it's... aliens, great aliens too. Oh, yeah, great great. aliens. You know, actually, that was supposed to be Ajax from the Warriors in that role, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I gotta go, Kyle Reese, man. I mean, he's such a badass. Uh, he's another guy too. He's not like a real big guy, but he's he'll just do anything to fucking. He'll do win. anything possible do to job. fucking win, and he will and it, die fighting. And, and it's gotta, just... I'm sorry, it's got to be the fucking Michael Bean, Kyle Reese, too, man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's got to be. The, oh, yeah, I forgot they had another fucking Kyle Reese. They Couple tried of to them. Make, they tried to make him like that fucking character from Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's like, it doesn't work. Like, it's just, he, uh, Michael Bean has to play that character and has to be taken seriously. I only like the first three Terminator movies in a match. I only like the first one, Mark. So I like the first two. <laughs> I love oh, Terminator yeah. 2. Dude, oh, I you were, I don't first, think, the first we, one I don't is think still you were the live when you it. saw Terminator 2 in a movie theater. It was an event, dude. It was a uh, total event. Uh, so oh, maybe I have... I, I fucking... Let me just get, get this out of the way. I fucking hate Terminator 2. It's such a horrible movie. I've tried watching it on different occasions to get into it because I'm such a fan of the first movie. I've tried multiple occasions, like when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was an adult. To get into Terminator 2, I just think it sucks. There's so many different reasons. Maybe we'll do an episode on it in the future, but I just can't stand that fucking movie. To me, it's all about Terminator 1. We should do and, a Terminator like uh, movie discography, like talk about every Terminator movie in our thoughts. Just I only two. like the first two. Let's just okay. let's talk about the first two. But okay. yeah, Kyle Reese, man, I think he's amazing. He's one of the one of the greatest, one of the best written characters ever in cinema he's up there and terminator is like the perfect movie in my opinion so i gotta go with kyle reese from uh terminator one man Bad cool. and michael bean was also good in the abyss yeah well, i love him in uh, aliens too he's fucking big james cameron guy isn't he mm -hmm. yeah 
Abyss. The Abyss was great. And and Navy Navy Seals with Charlie Sheen was pretty good too. Yeah, uh, I, I like Navy Bean Seals. Been, Michael Bean should have been way bigger. He, he did, but he did too. it to himself. Yeah. He kind of cut out of acting here and there, so it was him. Yeah, he was. Eric's at great. He was. He was great in Tombstone. Oh, oh yeah, we're on, th- we're on. We're on three, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, Joseph, man, you're next. Alrighty. So kind of like Jerry did a little bit earlier, I'm doing a little movie quote trivia. One of my favorite movie quotes of all time was said about this next character. So let's see if anyone can uh, ring the buzzer and tell me who oh. I'm talking about. And the quote is. I call that some bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. Ooh, I get that right now. Oh, got me. Got John me. Wayne got as me. Rooster Cogburn oh. from True Grit. Oh True my Grit. god! Yeah. My coworker chose him. My coworker, uh, my coworker Stephen chose him. Yeah. Fill your hand, you son of a bitch! What a Hell yeah. I mean, I had to include John Wayne as well, um, and. Rooster right Cogburn is one of my favorite John Wayne yeah. characters. I, I, I've never that really... remake. That remake wasn't bad. Actually. Jeff Bridges did a great okay. job. Yeah. Oh, that was Cohen, a good the Cohen, It's a great remake. Yeah, great remake. Um, but I had to include. I loved what Jeff Bridges did with it, but I had to include John. I had to pick oh, the John yeah. Wayne version because, because my older movies, it wasn't like those westerns. I wasn't really a western kid. I was watching like Ben Crosby and Bob Hope movies, uh, mm-hmm. Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis. Danny oh. Kaye movies. I was watching all those comedy movies, the uh, Three Stooges and shit like that. So I didn't really get into John yeah. Wayne. I do like The Quiet Man. You know, mm-hmm. that's a good rate movie. Catherine Harris, uh, whatever, whatever her name is, fucking gorgeous. I forgot her name. Mm-hmm. Catherine Hepburn. Catherine. Hep- yes. Yeah. So good. No, I, I'm a huge Western guy, and John Wayne's one of my favorite actors. And I had to include a John Wayne role, and Rooster Cogburn's one of my favorite movie characters of all time it includes some right. comedy but he's a great hero uh and the climactic scene when he's riding his horse with the reins in his mouth shooting his <laughs> pistols off had to include Good had to one. include oh, yeah. rooster cogburn they need mark, to bring more west they need to do more westerns man they do yeah mark money from home huh? money from home money from home What's that? One of my favorite because you mentioned you love uh you love the Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, oh yeah, I love movies. I love Deed Martin, all that shit. Mike from Home, Road Pit, movie. Bob, Hope and Crosby are like the fucking A list mm-hmm. for me. Watching those road pictures, mm-hmm. and I like I like the Road to China where Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis plop down and they go, "This ain't your picture, get out of here." <laughs> Bob Hope gets on them for being in their picture. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> modern westerns. Is Django Unchained, Quentin Tarantino? Good one, awesome. really, really Good great movie. movie. Yeah. I love The Unforgiven. I love that. Yep. It's just the older westerns, like Gun Gunsmoke. Pissed well, me that's off a TV because... show, Mark. That's a TV I know, but show. I didn't like. I like Bonanza. I think but Bonanza. Those are, those are paced differently than a movie. Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie, but those are my thing. But the yeah. modern westerns were more my thing. Yeah. Like uh, even they... the remake with Christian Bale on that. That one Christian Bale. Fuck what, 310 to, was he was it that 310 to Yuma? Yeah, I like that, that version. Yeah, fuck Christian Bale. I like I the unforgiven. Son of a bitch. You know, I think here, awesome. you know, you know, here, 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 big trouble, what, big trouble Little Hack China. Rules. That was supposed to be yeah. a western. Big trouble in Little China was supposed to be a western. Yeah. You know, Star I, I Trek was a space western. No, shut up, Mark. Um, <laughs> Mark I'll, I'll, I'll give you Star Trek. I'll give you two recommendations, Mark, since you're giving us recommendations to watch John Wick. Okay. My two Western recommendations that are kind of a little bit grittier. It's not like the Clint Eastwood stuff because those are like very kind of gritty Westerns. Oh, I like Clint Eastwood watch, ones. Watch Once Upon a Time in the West with um, Charles Bronson and um, Henry Fonda. I like Cato's Land with Charles Bronson. And watch uh, Rio Bravo with John Wayne and Dean oh, Martin. I did see movie. that a year years ago. I don't remember it though, man. And Rio Bravo. Yeah, I, I think I liked it. I think I liked to like that one. And real Bravo when uh the movie we talked about earlier, Saw and Precinct 13, mm-hmm. John or uh, John Carpenter based that movie. It's based on Rio off, Bravo. Yeah, it's yeah. based off of that. Because it's about them kind of hold up in the little in the in the sheriff's exactly. office. It's, yeah. It's John Wayne, Dean Martin, um, and um oh god, Ricky Nelson. Ricky Nelson. Yeah. Oh, I love Ricky yeah. Nelson. It's, it's the three it, of them are the main it out. characters. Check, it out. Rio Bravo. check out Rio Bravo if you haven't seen it in a while, and check out Once Upon a Time in the West. It's a really kind of dark I'm, movie. I'm, yep. You know what? Text me this stuff. I will. 
because I will. Tr- I, or if I've you want watching... something light, if you want a light Western, watch A Million Ways to Die in the West. Yeah, I love that movie. movie. <laughs> you know, you got Doc Brown in there. Oh. <laughs> got Charlize Theron in there. Oh, fuck, oh, actually put her instead of Sydney Sweeney. I'm glad she. I want to see that new Mad Max. Watch Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah. Blazing Saddles, baby. I love it. Shabby Patty. All right. Who's your next person? Well, this is uh, someone I always wanted to have on my action team. He, I, I, correct me if I pronounce his name wrong, but he was he was an alien. He was in Live and Let Die. He was in The Running Man. I'm talking about Yap Koto. Yap. Oh, awesome, Yap-Koto. dude! All right. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we just lost him recently, didn't we? Yeah, a couple yeah, of years ago. Good. Yeah. Son of a bitch, that was terrible. I, that really sucks. That he really lived a long life. Crazy. As yeah. a James, as a James Bond fan, that made me cry. Oh, he was badass in that. He was badass. Yeah, he badass was. alien. He's a, he was actually in a lot of stuff. If you look at his, he career. was in the worst Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Yeah. <laughs> that guy now, was what, just no. That guy character? was just cool. Now, what yeah, character? What character do you want? I'm what gonna have him from Alien. Oh, cool! Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, he's Parker, just a, Parker he's was just awesome. Cool. Oh, three dude. characters from Alien and got chosen so far. That freaking girl is what got him killed, man. She wouldn't get the fuck out of the way. Lambert mm-hmm. wouldn't get the fuck out of the way, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn women. I'm just kidding. I love For real. <laughs> she was the worst part of that movie. I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. She sucks. <laughs> but she did. She said some of the smartest lines. She said, let's she get out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> That's all they need to do is listen to her. And the movie would never, I mean, everything would have been peachy. But they didn't listen to but it. Yeah. So. But yeah, yeah, Dakota is just a badass fucker. Yeah, yeah I He's agree awesome. with you on that, man. Yeah. All right, my next one is an actual character, that an actual actor who was in the movie, of course. Talking about the great Carl Weathers. is fucking Apollo Creed, dude. Oh, yeah, nice one. You need some fucking brute strength in there, man. And he's a actually ended up being a pretty cool manager, man. Be more man than him. I mean, come Hell on, yeah. dude. He was awesome as Rocky's manager in Rocky 3, dude. Oh, yeah. Probably the only talking about the best part of the movie, actually, I thought mm-hmm. was him in the movie. So, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, pick, was great I, I, I want to pick Mick, but yeah, he, he's a good motivator and stuff, but he's, I don't think he'd survive. Apollo Creed can also well. fight, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I got to go with Apollo Creed. Oh, yeah. Um, You're the first person to choose like an actor from the movie, but like a right. different character, obviously, because right. you had to. So, yeah. all right. All right, we're back to Eric again for number two. Wait, did we? Uh, did Mark, Mark, did go? Mark go? Oh no, yeah. I didn't go. You skipped no. me. I didn't go. I didn't go to my number three. You skipped me. I did. I, did. I, I just let you. you. I just let you roll. Go, with go, it. go ahead. Who are you? My number. My, my right number now, three too. is uh, one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. John McClane from Die Hard. Yeah. I gotta have all his right. quips in there. Yippee ki yay! Yippee ki yay! Motherfucker, shooting a fucking. Oh, yeah. Shooting a fucking predator, trying to fucking kill his ass, you know. Fucking, they said, "Come to LA, it'll be great," you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> fucking a Bruce Willis, fucking John McClane, Die Hard. I love that. When movie. when you said one of your favorite Christmas movies, I'm like, what Bing Crosby role is he gonna pick? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like White Christmas, but it's not really a Christmas I'm movie. I'm dreaming. It's not really a Christmas movie. Jeez, dude. Christmas, but it's not really a white. It's not really a Christmas hey. movie. They do all seasons in there. No, that's uh, holiday in yeah, Mark. Wait, wait. Yeah, I know. Yeah, lethal that's weapon. Took so, <laughs> so Die Hard starts with a Christmas song and ends with a Christmas song. There okay. you go. <laughs> um, uh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Boy, did I hear you back talk me? Bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big crap. I, oh. I feel sad for hey, Denise that man Crosby. The, that man beat the shit out of his. Did kid. you ever see what Denise Crosby said about her dad? I've heard some things, man. <laughs> and his, his son was in the first Friday the 13th movie. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right. All right, now you're back to Eric. My number two. All right, man. So this is another one where I'm going to do like a kind of a character comparison. We can all, I don't know like if we all agree on this, but in my humble opinion, a lot of opinions of people, the most badass character in the movie Predator was Billy. Even more so than than Arnold. Billy was like the most badass and like he was like my favorite character in Predator. And I think you need like a character like that in that movie. That guy that's going to be like doesn't give a shit, kind of like just doesn't say a whole lot, but what he does say matters. And he's going to be that guy when there's like just three of them left and they're like getting to the chopper. He's just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to die. Let's fucking do this shit. Throw his gear and just be like, let's go. You and me. 
He's just going to be that guy. I don't give a fuck. And I have to include a character played by my favorite fucking actor in a movie by my favorite fucking filmmaker. I'm going none other than motherfucking Snake Plissken. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's like, you know, and a lot of people may think, oh, no, like he wouldn't give a fuck about the other two people. He's just kind of a lone wolf by himself. At the same time, man, Escape from New York, he is kind of a lone wolf, doesn't give a shit about him by himself. But he saved but a he lot is, of people. But he does. You know, he does have those moments. Like, there's the alternate opening where, like, he his friend dies, and you see some sympathy, like he's kind of sad about it. But even, too, at the end of the movie, you know, he's kind of upset. He sees all these people die. He asks the president, like, you know, a lot of people died uh, to save you. You know, I just want to know what you think about that. You know, so he does care. But he just like he he just he also doesn't care at the same time. And I feel like he would be that guy like saying shit like you know there's something out there hunting us. And it's not human, you know. We're all gonna die, you know. Like and this guy just facing his mortality, but just not giving a fuck and just keeping it together. He's that guy at the end. He's gonna be like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Toss his weapons. He's gonna be like, let's go, you and me, motherfucker. And you know he will die, but he's gonna die going down like a badass. So I gotta go with fucking motherfucking snake Pliskin, baby. Fucking love Snake Plissken. I love Kurt Russell. I love Escape from New York. That's a great movie. And Escape from, I even love Escape from LA too. But yeah, Snake Plissken. When they is go into Disneyland on Main Street and Escape from LA. <laughs> yeah. And all those fake sharks. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's so stupid. It, it's it's, it's I cheesy, love it. but I do yeah. like it. I saw that in a the movie theater. I was okay yeah, with it. Yeah. But Snake Plissken, man, that's my number two. Yep. So Joseph. All righty. So of course. <laughs> You have to have the Carl Weathers to the Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have to have that moment. And who better to choose as my Carl Weathers character, not by Carl Weathers himself, but one bad mother. Shut your mouth. Richard Roundtree is John Shaft from the movie Shaft. Woo! Ooh, nice. One bad mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Hell yeah. You I damn need a fucking Shaft. Damn. All right, Travis. Travis All right, Petty. Right. Number two, one of my all-time favorite action movie stars. He's If he's not my number one, he's my number two. I'm talking about Charles fucking Bronson. All right. Paul, Paul Kersey from the Death Wish series. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't look tough at first, but he's a badass, man. He's a hey, good... Man, you, get, you, you, you get anybody... Also- yeah, you give anybody a reason for revenge, they're going to be a different person. Oh, yeah. And Paul Kersey's going to go down dying like a man. Yep. With like that, a man. With that big ass man, machine. Man, man, man. In Death <laughs> Wish 3. Oh, hell yeah. Now I'm doing Team America. I'm a man, man, man. <laughs> America. Fuck but yeah. 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 <laughs> Three kinds right, of people in this world. Dicks, pussies, and assholes. You guys, you guys all need to, you, you guys all need to watch Orgasmo. I have seen that. I'm a yeah. huge Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Oh, fan. me I've too. Just about everything they've done. Basketball was funny as fuck. Oh, I love basketball yeah. when uh, Jenny McCarthy's polishing the knob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cream Abdul Jabbar in the museum. Can I go now? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right, all right. Your turn, Mark. My yep. turn. Well, I'm going to go off topic here. Of course. <laughs> hey, again, oh, God. I, I want to make my list a little cool. I, I, I have a lot of women on my list because women are sexy. Right? Right, Eric? Sexy? Badass chick is sexy. My wife, that, my, wife, my wife is sexy. Well, that's your key word, sexy, on your podcast. There sexy. you go. Yeah, we sexy. say sexy a lot. That's your key word. Yeah, you guys yeah. say sexy. Especially, especially when you're talking about ball breaker. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm still having. I'm still cleaning to come out of my ears from that episode. I was gonna say I had. I had. I have a pile of tissues over here in the corner. <laughs> oh shit! But oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with fucking. Uh, you know, Christina Applegate, Kelly Bundy. All right. Well, what? Cool. Why? She's what one of my team. On okay. Well, yeah. Nice to look at. I don't have as a problem the, with it. I just, on her. I want her to distract a predator, man. Just doing those. As that things. character. Okay. Yeah, Kelly Bundy. <laughs> Okay. 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 I want. I want to be different. I know you guys. Yeah, like yeah I like that. I like you that. you certainly mean. are, Mark. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should hear my number one. <laughs> oh no. Well, you already heard pick, my number one. Somebody else already said it. At least you didn't pick Jeff. Nobody's gonna pick my number one. Nobody picked my number two. So that's cool. 
All right, my next one is Eric just said it. Fucking Snake Plissken, man. Oh, Not yeah. Him. Badass motherfucker or anything. You kill me, Snake. Not now. I'm too tired. This is a yeah, fucking. No, I'm too tired. Kurt Russell was just awesome. And I even liked the oh, second one, too. God. It wasn't as good as me the first too, yeah. one, but it was still good. Um, but yeah, he's a badass, man. He got yeah, his fucking, fucking Snake Plissken on your team, dude. And there's fucking two guns. Come on, man. Badass, dude. Hell yeah. So now we're at number one, the Survivors. Eric. Oh, here we go, man. <laughs> this, so it was not only Predator, but it was, I was watching this particular movie and I thought to myself, we need to do this list. We need to do this fucking list because I know for sure this character, I, I think honestly, this character could do better against the Predator than Dutch did. Nothing against Dutch, but I think this character could easily, because Dutch got his ass hand to him a little bit, like a lot by the Predator, man. I mean, he got lucky that he was able to kill the Predator, but this guy right here, I think, could have taken the Predator when it comes down to just him and the Predator. And this is the character that inspired it. One of the most badass action characters ever in the entire fucking universe. He can't be fucking stopped. If it's just a million, even if it's a million Predators and just him, he could fucking do it. I'm talking none other than Mr. John fucking Rambo. Yes, oh, he yeah. already knew. John Rambo, baby. I mean, come on, like. The whole, like, the whole end, like, that whole final act of Predator where, like, you know, Duke's, like, doing all this stuff, like, setting up the booby traps. I mean, that's total John Rambo ripoff. And John Rambo would have been able to do it better than fucking, you know, than Dutch. I don't know why I call him Duke. I always get the names mixed up. Uh, I was confusing with Duke. Hey, Rambo's number a Chris- one. Rambo's a Christmas movie, too. So there you go. Oh, God. Nothing is no, over. no, no. That was not a Christmas. Just because there's a goddamn Christmas tree in the Yeah, background. it was a Christmas movie. <laughs> Okay, whatever. You have Mark. a warped sense of Christmas. But Mark. I, I was literally watching like all the Ram. I watched like Predator, and then I literally watched like all the Rambo movies, including like the the latest one, Last Blood, which was really fucking good. Really good. Uh, right? I love that scene where like he's playing five to one by the. I doors. think Rambo like, when he goes people. to. I think Rambo when he goes to Asian countries is pretty good with the. Yeah, yeah, I I love that too. That scene where he's playing five to one by the doors, yeah. like, just picking people off, but. Dude, that's, always on, kind of, that's always kind of that's always kind of a similar debate to like Terminator One versus Terminator Two is Rambo versus First Blood Part Two. Well, First Blood versus First Blood Part Two because they're very different movies. They're very different movies, but uh, you know, like both those movies are awesome, and like Terminator Two fucking sucks. Fuck that movie. <laughs> but to some people, yeah, come to on, some man. John, yeah, some people, but man, John Rambo, man. I mean, he, I think he would kick the fuck out of that Term- Terminator or uh, pre- guy. You got me mixed up movies now. He would have kicked the shit out of Predator, man. He would have done some crazy shit, man. Fucked that Predator up, um, way better than uh, Dutch did, you know. Hey, any, so, yeah. Anybody that can, anybody that can shoot, uh, hold and shoot a fucking M60 with one hand, it's pretty fucking impressive. He definitely yeah. need that on you, which yeah, is impossible in real life. But it's, my it's sole survivor, <laughs> the leader, my sole survivor, the leader of the group, none other than John fucking Rambo, played by Sylvester Stallone. Man, he's gonna I'm, take down the Predator, yeah, and he's gonna think get about to the fucking. Stallone. And then he's gonna get to the chopper with Shelby Wu and Boo Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Uh, uh, get to the chopper. <laughs> Adrian, get to the chopper. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that's my Rick. that's my that's Rick. my soul. That's my soul survivor, man. John Rambo. Cool. Joseph, who's your uh, soul survivor? Well, someone just picked it a few minutes ago, <laughs> and that is. Charles Bronson as Paul Kersey, particularly <laughs> right. from yeah. Death Wish 3. I mean, yes. he killed the Giggler. What chance does the Predator have? <laughs> he got the Giggler! Got the Giggler. He got the Giggler. I mean, he's just whipping out these just um, giant freaking like grenade launchers and all this shit in Death Wish 3. It basically turns into a farce by the end of Death Wish 3. Like, there's not... <laughs> there is no shot. At least the first two are kind of rooted in, like, semi-reality. <laughs> Death Wish 3 is just off the rails. And I think that would be, like, yeah. the ultimate, like, oh, this guy could take out the Predator. There's, <laughs> like, uh... There's literally... I think it was uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd. He did, like, a video. He's like, dude, you could literally... Death Wish 3, you could put, like, a health meter... And like all his stuff on there, it's like a video game. He's just shooting people down, not even taking any damage. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nobody picked Chuck Norris. I didn't pick him. Fuck. No. I'm surprised no one's picked it's Chuck Norris. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I only really know him from Walker Texas Ranger. I don't really have him. That's the thing. Movie. I don't really know many Chuck Norris characters. I just know Chuck Norris. Is Dude, Chuck the, Norris. The, the, what was that movie company he was with? Delta, uh, Delta Force, Cannon, and some, Cannon uh, films. Cannon, dude, he made a lot of great Cannon movies. Uh, the Hitman. I love that movie. Yeah. 
Hey man, he made me he made me want to buy a total gym. So yeah, he's pretty cool. The total mm. gym. I remember you, that. You shit. know, nobody beats Chuck Norris. You know, all those <laughs> memes. So he's a bad. He was an Enter the Dragon too. You was uh, uh no no it wasn't Enter the Dragon. He was in uh, uh I think it was Way of the Dragon. I thought he was in the first one. You know they're doing a they're doing a new Walker Texas Ranger too. Looks yeah. Oh yeah, that's what the guy well, Jared, was? Jared it's that's called that. Walker and it's with Jared Paliki and it sucks. And I love I love Supernatural. He's better in Supernatural. It doesn't make it it's weak. It is. Right. Yeah, I, no, do like it was, uh, I do like the new quantum. I do like the I do like the new quantum leap though. That's oh fuck yeah. yeah! I hope Chuck, it gets a third season. Chuck Norris. Uh, Chuck Norris was in Way of the Dragon. Way of the Dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, oh, uh, Tra- Travis Patty. Oh well, Which if y'all know what my favorite movie series is, and if I want to have James Bond be the survivor of this movie, <laughs> then I then I damn well please for him to be the survivor. And oh, I'm going no. with I'm going with Timothy fucking Dalton. Oh, oh, oh hopefully, particularly so... from License to Kill, I'm hoping. Yes, <laughs> because that is right not a, that's my all time favorite James Bond movie. Oh, nice. My grand, I remember that was that's a good one. And that was uh, my grandma had that one on VHS. That's so the only James Bond movie she had on VHS. And like when I go to her house, sometimes I would watch mine it. is Moonraker. Great movie. Wait, and I, got, wait, I, wait, I, I love Spy, I love Spy that loved me. I gotta I say, James Bond, he Jaws, I love Jaws. James Bond can survive anything. Not no, he really he, can. Well, yeah. he, 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 did did you see the actors. last movie? He can't see. A, he can't no, survive because anything. Those, but because the Daniel Craig movies don't count. No, the amazing. first two Daniel Craig movies are great. No, not, not the first two. The first Casino one Royale the was one. awesome. No, the first the one and the third one. The oh, second okay. one sucked. Yeah, yeah, Casino Royale's all awesome. right. But dude, it went from James Bond to Jason Bourne. I don't like it. Casino Royale okay. and Skyfall are amazing. The other oh, Sky- yeah, you're right. Skyfall and Casino Royale rule. Those two uh, are amazing. The other three suck. It, that, uh, How about I Cowboys like versus that. Aliens? Did you guys like that movie? No. no. Uh, I liked it. It was kind of cheesy. <laughs> but uh, Timothy Dalton, he is just a badass, and he was he's so underrated. Did you watch him in I Flash? Agree. He was pretty bad. Uh, he was, he's very well, 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 Flash. Yeah. I know, he's but it's just it's cheesy. Though. It's cheesy acting. It, I love that movie. Too. Yeah, I mean, if if you're if you're in a movie with like all of those <laughs> actors, of course it's gonna be cheesy. I know. Hey, but, he's, better, right. he's better than fucking Pierce Bronson. I can't stand. Ooh, Pierce I like Bronson. Pierce. Uh, Gold 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 I like Pierce. a great this movie. Where he's <laughs> gotten better. He's gotten better lately, in my opinion. Pierce Bronson. Now he's older. Well, he was in, he was really he was really cool in that movie with Owen Wilson where him and his family got caught in that Asian country. Um, remember they're trying to no escape or something like that. Is that what it was called? Remember? I'm not sure. Remember that one? But uh, yeah, a fucking Chris Brosnan was awesome. It's called No Escape. It's a pretty cool movie. It's pretty intense. Um, Timothy, uh, I, I have these... Timothy Dalton's the man. Sorry, Timothy Travis. Dalton's the man. Yeah. Hey, but if you want to see good, good Pierce Bronson, Remington still. Yeah. I don't even remember. I don't remember it. I know I've watched. Oh, it, it's a fucking so good. This is a fucking great show. Mm-hmm. It has the mom from like uh, Everybody Loves Raymond as her secretary. Oh fuck that lady! No, it, it is cool. But the one girl she wants to be like a detective, but he and she makes an agency called Rem- You got Remington Steel? No, James Bond. Oh, James Bond. I have that. Remington Steel or James Bond? Okay, Remington Steel is pretty cool. He couldn't do James Bond earlier because he had contractual things. He was supposed to when yeah. they hired Timothy Dalton. It was supposed to be Pierce Brosnan. And them. Be Pierce. I like Pierce. I like by the, I'm, Barry I'm, gl- I'm glad that we got Timothy Dalton for those two movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And by the All way, right. Joseph, that's how I just that's how I heard about you when I saw that ranking of the Bond movies with Ian Wadley and uh, Brian Davis. Yep. So and how did Barry, you? Yeah. So um, who did the title track for Living Daylights? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I love that song. song. They ever. suck. What's your point? Uh, they don't suck. Have you yes, heard they their do. MTV Unplugged in Europe? So great. No, I have uh, not. Mark. It's so good. They do not uh, suck. Mark, you, right. Mark, are, Mark, are you one of those? 
Are you one of those people that thinks that just because a band does an MTV Unplugged, it means they're great musicians? No, I've liked their albums ever ever <laughs> since they came out from the first album. I'm a big fan. Because I hate those kind of people that like, oh my no, god, they no. did an MTV Unplugged. I hate great Kiss. Musicians. And everybody <laughs> says MTV Unplugged is their best episode. Fuck Kiss. Well, yeah, well, Joseph, I don't know if this counts or not. I hate Nirvana, but I did like their Unplugged. Does that count? It doesn't count, does no, it? No, no, but like... Okay. Same like, here. I like the Unplugged. That's... People, people that will say like, "Oh my God, the only, the only legitimate bands were the ones that can play unplugged." L- listen, Joseph. Oh. Listen I here, Joseph. I That's went to Ario bullshit. Speedwagon when Dave Amato had COVID, mm-hmm. and they did an acoustic set. I was fucking pissed. I go, couldn't they? Have, couldn't they have got their guitar? You got, you got lucky to see the only time they've ever done that. Couldn't you got they to have see got it. their guitar tech to play a fucking real show? No, I was so pissed. I didn't want to see acoustic Ario well, dude, Speedwagon. Ari will be around like every six months. Dude. I don't so, fucking yeah, care. I'm still pissed <laughs> off about that episode. Mark, they're gonna play the rib fest. They're gonna play rib yeah. fest. Ari Speedwagon does not play rib fest. Actually, bitch. they did. They, um, they, 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 they do. They do. They I saw them at my state fair. But they they play fucking good venues. They're not fucking. They played a. They played a. They're not firehouse. They played a swap meet at a state fair. You know who I saw at a swap meet? I saw them at my state fair. You know who I saw them at a swap meet? Blue, yeah, Oyster Blue, Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Thank you. I saw Blue Oyster Cult at M3. What's your point? At the same place I saw oh, Fire. Oh, the I, so, I, I, saw, I saw Blue Oyster Cult at the and they were great. festival that I saw Firehouse at. Uh, I'm saying that Mark. Blue Oyster Cult was great, though. It was a great yeah. stage. Though. It doesn't matter where they play. No. Mark, who is your sole survivor? Thank you. Oh, uh, my sole survivor. Are we all going to log Is it fucking Mark? Steve Urkel? <laughs> Did you actually choose Steve Urkel? Urkel? <laughs> You know, you know, naughty girls need love too, right? Oh God! What? what? Oh shit! What? I picked Samantha Fox. You know why she survived? Why? Because all the guys <laughs> protect her because she's hot. <laughs> so how does she kill the predator? Yeah, how does she oh, kill they the kill, predator? They, she she got the last stab in because they are they weakened him. <laughs> so, Mark, I I think you completely missed the point what of this. No, he what said I could it? do anything. I'm trying to get a comedy No, no. no. Well, you, 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 you did. Like porno parody? <laughs> she like porno? Pornhub? It's like Pornhub? <laughs> and, that, and that's her, the wrong, that's her, the wrong her, kind of predator. Her and Kate Upton like make love on the helicopter. There you go. <laughs> the stuntman that played Ace Freely's double in Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park is better picked than that, man. Come yeah. on. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. Black oh, Ace Freely's better than that. <laughs> uh, uh, honestly, I was about to put Eric Cartman on my team. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I I asked Eric today I could put anybody on there, even females. He said you uh, could put a fucking cartoon character, you could do a as vocalist. Steve, if, so I picked Samantha I Fox. Accept, if, they, if they Steve make Urkel. sense, if they make sense he as a soul say survivor, that. he Steve said Urkel no. He better. said he he wants to hear weird shit. He told me that. <laughs> I didn't yeah, well, say that. I did not say that. I just said make it like fun. Okay, Jimi Hendrix kills the fucking predator with his guitar. There you go. It, it, there you go. Uh, Jerry, Jerry you go next. You go next. God damn. I just changed it to Jimi Hendrix. Okay, there you go. Okay, my next character is his the character from, guy. The, from the first the first movie, not the other three that followed, because he was badass in the first one, which is actually considered a Christmas movie, I guess. Mark mentioned him at the beginning. Talk about fucking Martin Riggs, Martin Riggs from the first Lethal Weapon. You need somebody that could take somebody out Woo! 300 yards. You need somebody that's kind of unstable, a little bit on the you know nutso side, who uh, and I made it ironic because he tried to he tried to off himself a few times in that movie, and I made him survive here. So that's the kind of ironic part why I picked him as being the survivor. Um, he was good in the other three, but I thought his, his fucking character in the first one was awesome. The director's the cut of the first one where they show him walking up to that school and he just shoots the guy. Yeah, and they go, "You Man. are crazy," you know. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, he's absolutely badass, and that's my survivor, yeah. man. Fucking A. I love all the Lethal Weapon movies. I, I do too, but the I can't first wait one, for five, more... dude. Yeah. I can't wait for five. I don't Mel know. G- without Richard, with, without Richard, Mel Donner, Gibson I don't know, is man. directing. I don't know, dude. Mel Gibson's I'll give it a, a great watch. director. Mel Gibson's I'll, a great I'll, director. I don't think it's going to the theater. He won so. an Academy Award, dude. Man. Come on. What the fuck does I don't mean? think it's going to the theaters, so I'll probably watch it. You know, I won't pay any money. Well, like Beverly Hills Cup, what, four? I want. I can't wait for that one. It's going to redeem the series. Hopefully, I hope so. 
I like the third one. A lot of people don't like the third one. Oh, but fuck I, that. I've never, fuck seen, that. I've never fuck. seen the third one. That's with Hec- Hector Elizondo's in there. Yeah. And a music part going. Wonder like World. <laughs> yeah, it's I thought it was cool. But cool. Eric, dude, this was a fucking fun episode, dude. This Thanks for the really topic, a lot man. of fun, man. I mean, I, I loved hearing everyone's different teams, hearing what everyone picked. Um, I, I hope more people hear this and like, uh, you know, other podcasts or, or like even YouTubers hear this and uh, make this a thing. You know, I think I'd love to hear like all kinds of people say like who they'd want to pick for their yeah. team. I, it's just a cool concept. You know, I think it was great. And I, I loved how everyone chose something different. I think there's only like, I, I think there's honestly only one or two where like, uh, you know, we picked the same person. So that was awesome. That We picked you know, three different picked... people from Alien though. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean it was just so interesting here what everyone picked and it was awesome that not a lot of us had like the same person on the on our list so that was pretty cool uh it, it was a lot of fun man i mean i just yeah. can't think of a better group to do this with too than uh all you guys man thank you thank you oh so, yeah mark i just sent you those movie recommendations i had for you <laughs> thank you man right on and you guys watch john wick <laughs> I'll, I'll get I'll get to it, Mark. Dude. Hey, if, hey, if you buy if you buy me John Wick, I'll oh, watch. Come it. on, I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? I hate the Matrix too. I think I hate the Matrix. I, I like the, the first Matrix. Matrix. The, the second that was okay. Be, uh, fuck those movies. Oh wait, you know that was part of B- BS Matrix Five. Why? Okay, Ma- <laughs> Matrix Matrix One. What? I like the Matrix <laughs> One. I love That's Mr. Horrible. Anderson. I fucking love that fucking movie. I like the Matrix movie. I don't have to watch. All right. So we get to you, uh, Eric, pimp your shit, man. Yeah, man. Uh, check out the Rock All Over You podcast. Uh, right now, our latest episode is the amazing and very dirty, explicit ball breaker episode. Uh, Hilarious. And, oh, my God. It's a great episode. I'm very proud of it. We had uh, Sam Wetz on that show, and he's amazing. We got me and Eddie have great chemistry with him. Also, check out. Uh, my buddy Eddie Canastracci on YouTube, he just uploaded a really great video. I'm still in the middle of watching it, but uh, he does a great video about the Beatles and the whole Paul is dead thing. I'm excited for the second part. Yeah, I, I, I still haven't watched the first part yet, but check it out. It's great. I mean, Eddie's, I mean, my buddy Eddie's got some great fucking videos on YouTube. But yeah, and uh, right now I'm working on editing the Van Halen episode. Uh, what album it is, I will leave that up to everyone to figure out, but hmm. it's a great episode. Please be balanced. Please be balanced. Please oh, be God. Balanced. Oh, fuck no. That's, no, that's going to be a while. They, they, already, did, they already did OU812, so they, they oh, have right. that hey, album. Hey, hey Jerry. It's, it's, a real, it's, a real, it's a real Van Halen Hey, now. Jerry, on Freeform, we need to redo Balance because that wasn't a real review. Oh, I would love to fucking review that yeah, album. That Please. Was, that was just Dr. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry are, are, you pull, are you going to pull but, a me with uh, <laughs> Def Leppard? Yeah. I, I did the same thing. I had to listen to like 10 seconds of each song. Except for the last song on that Def Leppard album, I really liked. But other than that, it was shit. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, oh uh, go subscribe to us on the Rock Allory podcast. We we're going to be reviewing a real Van Halen album. So that's the next episode coming up. Might be even a two Oh, so Van Halen three, cool, great. I'm still waiting oh, for no. that. I'm still waiting for that OU eight one two one you were telling me I was going to do with someone. Or the no, 50 that's 50. They already did OU eight one two. No, no, now fifty one fifty is fifty one fifty. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know he likes. He likes to us. Subscribe to us uh, and leave us some co- reviews on iTunes, and whatnot. So yeah, check us out, man. Rock all over you, podcast. Yeah, press that shit. Yeah, press spread it. spread those ass. Punch that out. like button. Sit you on any... that like button. Oh, and also, like Eric, it. after you pimp your shit, do you have any final thoughts on this episode? Uh, I mean, just you know, everyone get creative, man. Put your uh, you know on. It's gonna be on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Comment who your seven people would be, and even include like a chick. You know, for like your your chick that comes along, or if you want an extra guy, go for the guy. Yeah, if you want, if you want to be like, uh, you know, inclusive, uh, you can have. Well, if you're a girl giving us this list, you could give us your guy. There you go. Whatever, yeah, whatever you want to do. Uh, Or another girl, or another girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, keep it interesting. Or if you want to do like a video response or whatever, um, create your own team to take on the predator, man. I mean, it's a fun concept. Uh, We had a lot of fun with this, so go ahead. Yeah. All right, oh. Travis, man, any final thoughts on this? I don't think you have anything to promote, right? No, but I had – this is, like, the funnest time I ever had. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be with you guys. Thanks for having me on. 
I love talking. Oh, great. great having you back, dude. Seriously. Yeah, man. it's I great. You're, you're I didn't back know you were for the attack. On, yeah, I didn't know he was going to be on this episode. So when I saw Travi well, I tagged on here, him I was in like, everything who's on. Well, like, I saw, dude, when I saw Travi on here, I was like, fuck yeah, man. Travi Patty's here. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Travi Patty's back. Yeah. <laughs> After I pimp slapped Steve Harris. Oh, back inside the Tim Simon for that shit Shih Tzu album. Oh, <laughs> I love that album. album. Sorry. Oh my god! Of course you love that shitty fucking album. Love hey, it. Hey, 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 you know you that? You know, hey, can I say something to you, Jerry? And you ghost. Fans I like fucking Blaze Bailey. All right. So okay. of course I'm gonna you like ghost Shih Tzu. fans. I played <laughs> one of the new Bruce Dickens a lot. I think it's called Gates of Hell. That sounds like a fucking ghost song with better vocals. The Bruce whole backing, right the whole backing, the whole backing thing is a fucking ghost song, but he's the vocals are way better. So Bruce Dickinson, you should join Ghost, and I probably like Ghost. Tell me oh, what think, a great. I, th- I, I think, think I think I think Tobias Forge is a better singer than Bruce Dickinson. Yes, I, I, no, I think Bruce Dickinson's fucking overrated. Hey, I think me, I think I think '80s era Ozzy Osbourne is better than Bruce Dickinson. Same so, yeah, here. that's a no brainer. Yeah, Damn uh, Eric right. Adams. Man of War, yeah. Ooh, man of War, hell, mm. man, fucking hell and kills. Lizzie, Lizzie Borden, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lizzie, don't talk about Borden. Lizzie Borden. I love, yeah, this, guy. Guy. I love Borden. this fucking guy. I love, I, love I like Lizzie guy. Borden, but I don't know. I oh, love Mark, Lizzie Mark Storage from Crocus is better than all, Bruce Dickinson. My favorite vocalist of all time is Ronnie James Dio. Absolutely. Well, yeah, Absolutely. he's my Lizzie. he's my favorite, and then Lou Graham. He smokes Bruce like a brisket. Yeah, I can't argue I, that one. I agree with that. Lou, That's Gra- easy. Lou Graham is better than Bruce Dickinson. But yeah. fucking Dickinson's way better than Deanna, Bruce, in my opinion. Bruce is a better. Bruce is a better. No, no, Bruce is a. I said in my opinion. No, no, no. Bruce is a better. Bruce is a better. Bruce is a better singer than Paul, but Paul's music was a lot better. I don't even think he's a better singer than Paul. What, I, you I, said Bruce Dickens is your I favorite not, maiden, I Jerry. I did not like Bruce Dickens. No, I did not. I said I like them both the same. I like Blaze I Bailey, dude. Come no, on. you always said Bruce is a little bit higher. I'll just, I'll just say no, this. Not. For, for all, I always for all put him on the cra- same level. For all the crazy-ass maiden tards out there, I'm sure there's a lot watching. <laughs> oh, look, I love Bruce, and I love Paul. But man, those first two maiden albums just absolutely oh. they do. First the three, first in my opinion, the only two albums that, that matter. Yep. Are and the by first the way, two. I was trendy. Gonna, you guys are all trendy. Oh, oh not fuck you! Promote. I'm not trendy. Get, get the I'm fuck not, out of here. Not to promote something, but my Tony Martin Black Sabbath box set should be arriving next month, which is pretty awesome. Uh, What'd that go for anyway? And it's like the CD, bucks, it's not bad at all. That's not bad. That's not, that's not, CD or bad. vinyl? It's, it's it's fifty bucks for the CD, hundred for the vinyl. Oh, it's I get the CD then. I'm such that's a black not. Sabbath. I'm such a black Sabbath nest swinger. I bought the CD box set too. Oh yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah. See, I'm pissed because I paid. Well, a bunch so you of money. understand. I paid a bunch of money for <laughs> that a couple of years ago. Oh, you that, understand? That's, that's a good one, though. No, uh, I have Rules a. You know what? I have, no, I have an headless cross. I have an. Oh, I have an import. I have an imported copy of. I have an imported copy of Forbidden from Romania. Ooh. I'd never pay money for that album by itself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Joseph, final thoughts, man? Uh, watch all these great movies. You know, we all talked about some great movies. Yeah, right. uh, if there's any of these movies you haven't watched, whether it's different genres that you're not really accustomed to watching, like Mark said with Westerns and stuff like that, or it's just a movie that you hadn't heard of, uh, check it out. I know we, 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 we pimped a lot of John Carpenter on this episode. Eric yes. and I did... A John Carpenter marathon on his podcast a couple of months that ago was a great one. for Halloween. Um, yeah, for that Halloween, was a fun episode. Had a great time with that. So check yeah. out John Carpenter movies. Check out us talking about John Carpenter movies. Yeah, um, yeah. Again, as I always say, buy physical media. Yes, physical media. Buy physical media. Always, oh, always. Particularly on things like this. Shout Factory is your friend. I love um, Shout Factory. Full of life. All right, Jerry, man, you pimp, you got some shit to pimp, so I'll go last. Well, I got some cool concerts coming up. I got to see. I've never seen the Alan Parsons Project before live, before Ooh. in concert. Gonna go see Heart. Gonna go see them. Cheap um, um, fuck, what was it Cheap Trick opening? See? Right? You seen Queens oh. Rake and uh, Armor Saint? No, no, I ain't seen that one. Oh, I seen I'm that the last that. time it was around. Um, I love. Oh, it's Ori Ori Orianthi and Steve Vai. I'm gonna go to that one. Ooh, nice. oh, Hitler. Um, 
things. They're doing like they're doing like three different shows, and one of them happened to be Nashville, so that's kind of cool. I guess Steve Vai and uh, Joe Satriani have an album coming out. I put the video up. They're, they actually did I a song. There, there's a there's there's a video with Steve Vai and her yeah. playing a tune, and it fucking just rocks, dude. I mean, she's an exceptional. I love her. Uh, so uh, <laughs> looking forward to that, and of course, more shows on the Free Form Rock Podcast, which is always you know interesting stuff we talk about. Um, so uh, yeah. I look forward really to uh, but also you got your three shots. Down. Oh, three shots now podcast. Yeah, we got some news coming out about that. We may be, rec- <laughs> we, may be recru- we may be recruiting somebody here. Uh, oh we, shit! We, um, to, we need we need like uh, we're like a triangle, but we need a square. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we need four different sides to our show. So we're gonna maybe ask somebody else. I don't know who yet, but uh, we're gonna be uh, discussing that and uh, hopefully have some news on it. Yeah, and check us out. We're gonna be doing a show about. Fucking Phil Spector, man. Total scumbag, but I'm looking forward to trashing that yep. scumbag. So did you see looking that movie yet? To... A talented scumbag. True, but he's a fucking scumbag. Did you see Spectre yeah. on Showtime? Not yet, but I'm going to. I have watch to do it. that. Yeah. Because they were filming, we're doing it on Monday or Tuesday, so I gotta watch it. So yeah. yeah. Um but other than that, yeah. I mean, like you guys, like Joseph said, buy physical media, man. Yes. That's the only way that's the only way oh. the artists fucking uh get money nowadays. So yeah, you know, it's important. Do it. And thanks again, I, Eric. It's a fucking great yeah. topic, dude. Oh yeah, I mean it was fun, man. I'm glad, uh, glad you guys, uh, glad you guys were like, yeah, jumped on board with this topic, man. Yeah. I was just happy to do it, man. It was fun. This show is about movies, music, and fucking sports. So I don't think we'll do a full sports episode. I think people get bored of you that. No, you never, you know. never know. Uh, well, I can't do a hockey episode with you guys. Oh, hey. Fuck you, Mark. <laughs> I, I'm not as versed in that sport. I could do oh, basketball, baseball, Canada. or football. <laughs> I'll talk about the Patriots. Uh, mm. But uh, like Tom Brady might come back out of retirement in midseason for a Oh, my God, team. please, please. Mm, and please, then, Tom, save us from Patrick Mahomo. I fucking hate Patrick Mahomo. And then we Jerry, can't I, deal with him no more. I was just saying, Jerry, I really, I, I really wish Alan Parsons was coming around me because I took a peek at that set list that they're playing right now. It's pretty impressive, yeah. They're playing yeah. Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. Yeah. Like, man. That's some good shit on that. Like it is. I, I think really, I think really doing, wish. I think they're doing a turn of a card. I think they're doing the whole album. And, no, they're not doing that. Whole album no, the tour, they're doing that. But um, they're doing it's a lot. Just, off it's that it's album, a good mix. It's a good mix. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. I love fucking them. Uh, one of the most proggy bands that I like the most. I'm not really a huge prog guy, but Alan Parsons. Oh, you love Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm really nice excited. One. They just now Deep Purple and Yes are touring together end of this year. Oh. Um, I don't I'm know. Sad. Yes, it's yes, yes. It's not yes with John yeah. Anderson without John. Yes, so, no. Yes, but it's, yes it's died with Chris Howell. Squire. When, when Chris Squire died, yes. No, died those I'm so mad. They had Howell. yes since John left. No, it, it's not yes to me. I'm so mad. I, I still see... think it's yes, but whatever. I'm so mm. mad. I want to see Deep Purple, but they're not coming anywhere near me. And like, I even though like Richie Blackmore's not there, I still want to see fucking Deep Purple. I saw yeah. them with Priest when they had the co headline. That was fucking amazing. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm hoping to go see this. They're coming on a Saturday to a venue pretty close to me uh, in September, so I'm hoping to go see that because I've never seen either band. It was before, my friend. Yes, so. He loved. Oh, okay. He loves Judas Priest. He didn't know any of the Deep Purple songs, even Highway Star. I go, dude, really? what the what? fuck? Really? He, he didn't know, know he none didn't of it, dude. He was kind of water? bored during Deep well, Purple, and I was well, like, yeah, you know. Well, as the well as the biggest Deep Purple fan in this Zoom chat, mm. you are. They, they got a new album coming out soon, so hopefully, man, I I will. I, I'm excited. The last, for that. the last three have been great. I just don't know. How, I don't know how they're going to do it without Steve Mortz. I think Simon McBride's a pretty great guitar player, so I'm pretty. I'm interested to see what happens. I'm, I'm interested to see what he brings to the uh, the songwriting side of stuff. He's got more of a Richie Blackmore kind of tone. All Just right, man. So let's let's start ending this. Let me give some promotions. Uh, tomorrow on the Freeform Rock Podcast, we have this guy right here, Joseph Stop, and Andy Rodriguez from Black Spinner Circle and Three Shots Down. We Ugh. Jerry was doing th- he was sick or whatever. I'm glad episode. I did not miss that episode. I think you were on vacation, so we did Green yeah. Day Dookie. Is it a pile yeah. of Dookie, or is it a classic yes. '90s album? Find I'll out give tomorrow you my, on the Free I'll, I'll give you my podcast. review now. Yes, it's a big pile of Dookie. I'm, 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 I'm glad you. I'm glad you weren't on there, Jerry. You would have brought us down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was a little spoiler there. But uh, Eric, what do you think of Green Day? I like three songs by them. And that's oh, it. Uh, I'd like them if they hired a vocalist. 
<laughs> oh fuck! Oh, oh bam! Yeah. Oh, their their, their, their drummer, their, their drummer has some chops, but he's a pretty fast and loud drummer. He's their bass player is amazing. Yeah, their bass player is really good. Yeah, I will admit that. Yeah, and, but they and, got they got like three songs I like, but I mean, I'm not a huge fan. The only I song think... I like, the only the only song I like by him is that slow one, uh, September something. Wake me up with September ends. Wake me up with September, like September ends. Yeah, and September. So also, this is uh, on a YouTube channel, so. Hit that thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Sit give on us, that subscribe. Give button. us comments, give us audience participation. Like Eric said, tell us what your seven characters and your chick or guy you would recast in this movie. Yeah. And also check out the Freeform Rock Podcast YouTube channel. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Basically, every day I give quick thoughts about shit and it just comes to my mind before I walk into work. And I do that on this channel too, BS. Those get a lot of, like, I get 500 downloads, wa views, watch fucking a minute video. Fucking is bringing up the channel, so check that out and uh, share. And like Alpha Beta used to say here in South Southern California, tell a friend. <laughs> so what's going on next week on BS Mark? Next tell the week, people. What is it, Jerry? We're doing your thing, isn't I it? I think we're doing uh, top 10 plus one songs that have to do with time, whether it's, you know, like time by Alan Parsons, too much time on my hands in the title, stuff like that, you know. So uh, and then the uh, week uh, after is the night one, right? Night song, night, night, night song, night songs, songs about Joseph's idea. Songs either with the word night in the title or songs about the nighttime. Yeah. So uh Travis, you could be on both of those if you want to. So you're cool. Oh, well then i I'd love to be on the night one. Yeah, it's cool, right. man. Same here. Yeah, I'd be down if uh, if there's room. Oh, there's room. I just keep three. <laughs> there's always, Eric, there's always room for you, man. Well, always room. I can always fit inside. That's not all right, Jerry. Take us out, man. Again, you guys, thank you all for being on. This was like I keep I can't say enough. It was a lot of fun having you guys on oh, again. Yeah. Great topic. Y'all take care, man, and please come back, man. All of you. See you later, guys. Take care, take everybody. Care.